Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Baka 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 Podcast. Baka. 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 It's amazing how every time you open your mouth, you prove you're an idiot. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Baka Baka Baka. We are an anime podcast. Every two weeks, we come together to talk about anime that we've recently watched. We discuss it like we're a book club. This week's a little more literacy based than usual, but it was, you know, we still didn't read anything, but we are going to talk about it. Uh, and, and just, I'm going to jump right to the end. Next episode, we're going back to ReZero. It finally finished up season two. We're going back. Uh, call, call it now. So if you're, if you're wondering, if you're worried, it's coming. At, at, <laughs> yeah. Like literally after we get done recording, I think some of us are going to go off, watch the first episode again. We've been waiting. Heck yeah. <laughs> but we are going to talk about this anime first. So to talk about it, I need the help of my co-host. And first off, we have the Benedict Cumberbatch to my Sherlock, Jeremy. How you doing, man? I'm wait. doing pretty good. <laughs> you, you know, you, well, <clears throat> if you're I'm that, really I just I can only imagine what's coming up. Go ahead, Jeremy. I know. How are you doing? <laughs> right? Oh, <laughs> well, I'm I'm doing pretty good. Um, I have uh, uh, not really had a lot of time to watch very many things, but I did take the opportunity to watch the Snyder cut of the Justice League, and I was really impressed. It was really good. Um. It had a completely different flavor from the original. And I, I know if you really want to know anything about it, you can just hop online. There's tons of reviews popping up everywhere. We watched a couple after we finished watching it, and they're pretty good. They're pretty accurate. But, um, yeah, it. Uh, I mean, you can do a lot more in four hours for sure. But uh, the characters, they just they felt more consistent with who they were pretending to be or presenting themselves as in the individual shows. Uh, especially like Aquaman and it, it gave them something that was maybe a little bit different flavor than Marvel, which I know was the intent with the Whedon cut was to try and use the Marvel formula. Um, and it just, I don't know, it just works so much better when you let DC be a bit more, um, a bit more dark and dreary and a bit more, um, gloomy, uh, where for, for example, the flash is, the only one that really tries to be comedy relief consistency consistently. And I just thought it was a, it was really nice. I highly recommend it. Anybody, even if you've seen the original justice league, maybe especially if you've seen the original justice league, take a chance, uh, you know, take the time and watch it. It's good. That, that was a lot of thoughts from a guy who didn't know what the Snyder cut was a week ago. But I I'm didn't. glad, I'm glad you liked it. Really? Hey, really? You know what? Throw shade at him. <laughs> that means I have no ulterior motive. That's true. That's true. And, and I, I can back him up because I, I was the one who's like, guys, are you going to watch the Snyder Cut? And I still haven't. I do plan to. I'm just like, okay, what am I going to sit outside like four hours in a week? And I've I've been going back through. I've watched Wonder Woman, Aquaman, Man of Steel. Mm. I still have Batman versus Superman to do. Mm. And oh, then I get to you're go gonna to watch the, the You're going to watch the director's cut of Batman versus Superman though, right? I am, but I'm still... Okay, because I haven't seen that, and apparently there's scenes in it that are important for the Justice League, the new release. Yeah, and is, I, I was I was planning on doing that one. Um, is the second Wonder Woman important to the timeline? No, I, I don't think so. But it's not, not really. Not available for free right. streaming yet, so. So uh, it's not important. All right, <laughs> let's go to our other host. He is the Will Ferrell to my Holmes and Watson. Jason, how you doing? <gasps> Oh. At least on comedy relief. Um, <laughs> that one was good. Fantastic though. now. <laughs> um, no, I've been. Uh, I, I a buddy of mine asked me to play a weird early access game, so that's right up my alley. Called uh, Generation Zero, and it just looked not interesting. And uh, I got into it, and it's. It, it's it's pulled me in hard. It's uh very much it feels zombie apocalypse, but instead of zombies, it's robots. And then the whole mystery is where did these robots come from? Because it it takes place in 1980s Sweden, so it feels like you're watching Stranger Things, but you're in a video game. 
So like your main mode of transportation is like an old school 80s bicycle. And um, it, it's funny because most of the guns I recognize from Cold War, uh, Call of Duty Cold War. Um, <laughs> and uh, it, it it feels good when you're fighting these enemies and they're quote unquote bullet sponges because they're literally robots. Like there's no mm-hmm. other means to them. So uh, all of Sweden has been evacuated. And you don't know why. Like when you show up on the because apparently you're the story is you crashed in a plane and you got amnesia, of course. Um, so you're uncovering the story of what what's happening and where these robots came from. Uh, there's like, you know, was it a Russian invasion? Was it aliens in? Yeah. So it, it the story really, really grabbed me. And also the the quest system plays very Skyrim ish because it's like. You can do the main story, but you don't have to. You can just go kill robots if you want. Um, I have a question about the combat system. Ever since uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, I've been spoiled with watching parts come off of robots when they shoot them. Is that something that they have or oh. intend to add? Yes. Very, very much so. So you can cripple robots oh, by taking off legs. Uh, a lot of their weak points are covered by a shield, so you got to blow the shield off. And the these are the same people that made Just Cause. So, like, the, wow. the graphics are beautiful. The weather system looks nice. really nice. And, yeah, the the effects of, like, you can tell if you're hitting a non-weak point because just nothing's happening when you hit the robot. But when you do hit a robot, like, you get these cool, like, blue sparks. And, That's um, awesome. It, it's very, uh, it, it feel, the combat feels really reactive. That's cool. Do they, do they have any ETA yet? Or, like, are they really early in the alpha? It's actually released. I, I thought it was early mm-hmm. access playing it. And it's it's a full released game. Um, and it's got DLC and everything. So uh, cool. the DLC, well, actually later in the story, and then also the DLC, you actually run into NPCs. And then, you know, you get more story that way. But um, yeah, it's a blast. And, it, and it's got a very Minecrafty multiplayer. So like you can just be playing single player. And you can just invite people to your game in and out. And your character stays with you. So you're playing single player and you go into someone else's multiplayer you keep all the stuff that's in your inventory and in your stash that's cool very cool and my name is troy uh i i want to talk about superman and lois that that's i've also recently just started the expanse but i've only two episodes in plan to to at least watch the first full season and decide where i'm going with it uh even though it looks good but i i'm not ready to talk about that yet and I'm way behind on that, apparently. <laughs> no one told me Thomas Jane was in it. Anyway, Superman and Lois. Uh, so I've I've dabbled in the Arrowverse before. The first two seasons of Arrow I really liked. The first season of Flash I really liked. But the CW has a tendency to run their shows into the ground <laughs> and then keep them going. But I love so, Superman. So Dean Cain's back? No. Oh. So I love Superman. <laughs> Always have. He's my favorite superhero. So God, I remember show, that <laughs> show comes out. I used to love that show too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's yeah, that's this. Out. That was this. That was the family Superman that my parents always were like. Mm-hmm. It's Superman night. Let's let's watch <laughs> Dean Kane. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, no, Troy. Go ahead. No, my wife still. T- I'm like, I'm gonna go watch Superman and Lois. She's like, well, tell me when Clark and Lois is on. All right, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah the, right. the new the new superman show it it's a really cool take on superman in my opinion he's now a father of teenage sons um you know S- superman is this figure who can't make mistakes because he's so powerful and if he's messing up then that has huge repercussions and what does he do when his sons find out he's been lying to them for most of their lives and has been eavesdropping on their conversations to protect them but you know can hear everything they've ever said anywhere on the planet, <laughs> you know? And um, it, it's really cool to see Superman have to go through the struggles of parenting teens. One's, you know, the jock one's, you know, into video games, playing a video, playing like, uh, like a mortal Kombat game where he's beating up Superman. He's like, why don't you play as Superman? Cause Superman's boring, dad. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's cool. That, I it, like that. I really, and I, I'll say I, I also love Henry Cavill's Superman, uh, mm-hmm. but his Clark is like 
the studliest Clark that ever existed. And this is very much more close to the Christopher Reeves, Clark Kent, you know, <laughs> pretending to struggle with a water cooler as he walks to the bus and, and got his nerdy glasses on. And, and it's like, oh, yeah, that's that's the Clark Kent that I, I grew up with. Um, but again, I still love Henry Cavill's too. Any, any, I love Superman, and I'm just glad he's on TV. Uh, I'm sure I won't be watching this long term, but I'm enjoying it while it's still fresh and young. Mm-hmm. Uh, quick question then. Um, I, for the kids, I know zero about Superman's children, if they're in like comic books or whatnot. I, I have zero knowledge about that. But I'm curious because Superman showed his uh, Kryptonian traits, right? His strength and everything at a very early age. Did his children, because it'd be very difficult for him to conceal or maybe not even good for them to conceal so, it. That so comic book Superman has one son, I think, currently in prime lore. Um, mm. This Superman, his sons are very human. And that's one of the things that the story deals with is do they have powers or not? Um, you know, mm. and I don't want to spoil anything. It's a first mm. episode thing. It's a, it's a spoiler, especially since they're twin brothers and um, both don't have the same thing. Um, mm. So that makes it really interesting to how to deal with that. But yeah, it's very much they're not straight up Kryptonian superpowered from childhood like he was. So that's how he was able to conceal it. They had, they had no idea. Okay. And... <laughs> And Superman's cooler than Batman. All right, let's go on to talk about our <laughs> anime. <laughs> oh, you just got so many boos. <laughs> Die on that hill. Uh, the, the anime we watched is Moriarty, the Patriot. Uh, this is basically a... You know how Disney did Maleficent? <laughs> yes. It's that That is such a good home. example. Yeah, it, it's... Hey, let's look at it from the villain's point of view. So yes. uh, it, it's Sherlock Holmes, but yeah, from from the evil villain. And let's go to our non-spoiler reviews. Uh, Jason, this was your pick. What did you think of the anime? I actually really enjoyed myself watching this anime. Um, I love a good villain. And, I, and when I say a good villain, I mean someone that's not just evil for evil's sake, but somebody that has what they've justified in their mind as a morally righteous position that happens to be an evil position and that they can attempt to justify that position. Um, and in throughout the story, he is not a straight up evil character by any means. He just does evil things to get his ends. Right. Um, and so I was really fascinated with this character. It felt very much, um, like the last anime we watched where it was a subversion of the hero doing, you know, society's good work. Uh, but this person wasn't lied to. Um, <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. And then, you know, when Holmes came on the scene, it, it, it got even better because now, now you have that great conflict. So I liked watching the deconstructed deconstruction of a crime and there wasn't a lot of risk in his plans because that's kind of what was driving the story. So that didn't seem to bother me very much. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, I had a blast with it. All right, Jeremy, what'd you think? Uh, it, it was difficult at first. Uh, <laughs> the first few episodes, uh, maybe even more than the first few episodes were, they were just kind of slow and and boring for me, but it, it was it seemed like it was more because something important was missing. And I'm wondering if that's more what I've been trained to expect from anime is a certain kind of pacing and a certain kind of of um, mix in the pot, if you will. But uh, when Holmes does come on the scene and enters into the storyline, I it was there. What was missing was there. So um I did kind of enjoy it at that point. I have some some frustrations, minor frustrations, I think, with the portrayal of the the society in this. But I definitely want to get more into that when we get past the spoiler section. Okay. For me, I'm I'm very similar to Jeremy. I I went into this like this is for me. Uh, I'm not 
I'm not like a huge geek of Sherlock Holmes, but I do like a good Sherlock Holmes story. I've, I've seen all, all the, the BBC show. I've seen the movies. I've, I haven't read the books, though. Um, but I was like, yeah, this is going to be great. And then the first, after the first couple episodes, I'm like, I'm not gelling with it. Something is missing. I'm not feeling like anything really matters because <laughs> things are happening so, so easily. Um, and then, like you guys said, uh, our antagonist, Sherlock Holmes, arrives and <sighs> suddenly the stakes matter. Everything felt better. And I'm into the show. I'm I'm excited for season two. Which uh, I found out is coming <laughs> recently. Uh, I have some some uh, obviously some some qualms about the first half and then some some issues. But it was cool to see Sherlock Holmes in anime form. And that's one thing I had to accept. Yeah. This is anime Sherlock Holmes. It is not going to be <laughs> the straight out of books. It's not going to be from the BBC version. It is okay. This what if we <laughs> turn Sherlock Holmes into an anime protagonist? What would that look like? So that took some getting used to, but it's still very yeah. very fun. Um, yeah. So I I would say I recommend it, especially if you are a Sherlock Holmes fan, just to see what Japan's take on the character is. I think. One thing I'm hearing is, from both of you is, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like you could both walked into this expecting a Sherlock Holmes story. Not really. Mm-mm. Um, no, okay. I just no. It just I think when I, when Troy said that, that it was too easy for him, I think that was what Sherlock Holmes contributed. And yeah, it didn't I, we, necessarily we, mean that I needed Sherlock there. Just something to get in his way, some failure. We, yeah, we we can, let's let's dive more into it in the spoiler section because I definitely mm-hmm. uh, have the exact same thoughts that Jeremy's having, but we can point out specific moments too in that part. Mm-hmm. All right, so before we go to that spoiler section, what about the OP and the ending, you guys? What do you think? OP was For all right. Once, yeah, this is good. I, the um, first few times I watched it, I was like, uh, 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 but I'm actually kind of hooked on it now. <laughs> uh, yeah, the no, I, I I enjoyed the music and the visuals. Um, the ending uh, I didn't really jive with, and I only watched both twice, and then I skipped them both. Um, but because you said that there was after credits, and there is a couple or a couple episodes, there's an after scene. Um, I ended up just like fast forwarding to the end before going to the next episode so that's what i I do almost every time (laughs) i think this op is textbook what anime should be doing with their op first off you have the song which is pretty catchy especially that part like Mm -hmm. gotta set a key thief to catch a thief but the lyrics are (laughs) moriarty's mantra out loud like here's moriarty's philosophy and an agenda in the show in song form. So that's cool. And they show the lyrics at the bottom so I can understand them. That's dope. And then no spoilers in the imagery of the OP, but heavy symbolism. So you understand who everything is and where everybody is. Um, Moriarty keeps making sacrificial moments. We see him jump off a building, put a gun to his head, his two um, hoodlums or, or his, yeah. his hired men literally pass a, chess piece pawn between themselves in the op and it's like ah you're the pawns okay that's some good symbolism uh sherlock and him pointing guns at each other's heads uh a, a, a flower on the ground that's soaking up blood and then food rotting away it is perfect with no spoilers but all all the themes you need to know going into the show is great the ending the kids painting on the wall is like, OK, I, I guess that's cute. But then the last painting they show is is Roshark Falls. And I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool, though. <laughs> that's a that's a nice little <laughs> drop. And then three grown men posing <laughs> like supermodels in the rain. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you're you do them very pretty. <laughs> They're very right. pretty characters. I, that, I kept getting that through the whole series. Like, okay, yep, you need your glamour shot for these guys. <laughs> I everyone don't is, know why. Everyone is very good looking, but especially that shot yeah. of them in the rain. It was like, okay, yeah. the GQ's coming in. <laughs> so the camera in a minute. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, the ED not as much. The, the the song was you know was danceable. Like it was it was fun to listen to. But but that OP, I have, I put it into my rotation. I did like the song enough. But watching the imagery, I'm like. 
I wish every anime would do this and not spoil stuff, but let let the OP say something about where you're going into. It was cool. So, so you said it's a textbook OP, like best. Is this is this the best OP? I wouldn't say the best, but we always complain about like, hey man, they they put spoilers in the the OP. Um, and this nothing in the OP happens in this anime, <laughs> yet everything yeah. that happens in the OP is, is relevant. Like I said, the two characters passing a pawn between them. It's like, OK, mm -hmm. OK, I get you. I get you. And now I know who these characters are. And the show hasn't even started. Um, so, it's cool. yeah. OK, well, I'm just fishing for Cowboy Bebop. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, this is not the, the best of all time. <laughs> OK, OK. <laughs> Uh, all right, let's go on to our spoiler section. So uh, everything we will be discussing here will spoil characters, plot points, uh, themes, questions of morality. Uh, there also will probably be spoilers for general Sherlock Holmes lore from, you know, all the way back in the <laughs> 1900s. So come on hey. now. <laughs> Hey, some people might have been like, no, 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 I was going to read that soon. You don't know. I didn't know there was books called Sherlock Holmes until <laughs> I saw this anime series. Nope. And now so I can't watch any or wait, read any of it. Yeah. So spoiler warning has been dropped. And what's interesting is this anime actually starts in 1911 mm -hmm. New York, America, with a young boy reading Sherlock Holmes' The Final Problem, which is the, the book where he battles Moriarty. And then, and it's like a, a, a cop walks in and asks him about it. And he's like, yeah, I'm reading Sherlock Holmes. He's like, I don't like books like that. And then the story starts proper. And we jump back to uh, 1800s Britain. I'm not really sure when it yeah, takes place. Yeah, like something. 1870s or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and we start with a, we see a young boy running at night from someone chasing him. He drops a sewing kit and he gets captured and then we meet our main character reading about it in the newspaper about this boy being murdered. And and the character who's reading this is our main character, William James Moriarty. And I don't know if William is always part of his name. I thought his name was supposed to be James Moriarty. But I yeah, don't they used know. to call him Billy Moriarty. OK, so it was William. OK, no, I'm just totally BSing. You're the one who said you Wikipedia. <laughs> How dare no, you? No, they always called him Moriarty. He didn't even know his first name for a really long time. It's like his first name is mentioned a couple of times in the book. I think it's uh, some reference by Watson. But other than that, he's just always called Moriarty. Well, I'm going to refer to him as Moriarty going forward, especially because a character named William shows up later. Uh, so we'll just call him Moriarty. Uh, Jason, what you, did you think of this character? I really enjoyed this character. Um, again, like I said in the non-spoiler section, the moral grayness around him, which kind of obfuscates how you should view him, is really fascinating. Because I found while he's committing crimes, which are on an objective scale, literally crimes, <laughs> I found myself rooting for him to do these things until I came to the realization, oh, right, that was wrong. Um, and I love that kind of uh, moral muddiness when it comes to these kinds of characters. Um, and he just kind of presents that perfectly. He's like he's he's the super villain of his time, you know, that's only matched by Sherlock Holmes. And I think, th again, that's that's probably why for me it was another pass on why everything was kind of so, quote unquote, easy for him. Is because he, you know, not only did he think of everything, but he also had backup plans. And uh, he, you know, powers of observation that he could use for forces of evil. Um, he just, it, it, it was kind of in a vein of Dexter where he went after bad people or people that he considered to be bad people. So, um, yeah, I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed this character. I think all of them, except for maybe one or two, are literally killers. Yeah. Yeah, they were all. Yeah, even, bad. even the guy he uses as a pawn on the boat is like he, he raped and killed people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What did you think, Jeremy? Um, there, There's things I liked about Moriarty and there's things I didn't like. 
Uh, one of the things I really liked was the potential that the anime had to uh, give us these first few episodes of seeing things through his eyes. And I thought that's where it was going with it. But later, I didn't get that impression. And what I mean by that is he has a very strong worldview that the caste system that exists is entirely negative, that the people on the top are always malicious, always malevolent, always abusive. And that only those that he's personally vetted are actually good people. And uh, that's kind of the way that he presents himself to those that he pulls into his inner circle. And his goal is this revolution, essentially. Uh, eliminate the caste system, eliminate the current structure. Um, and I thought that they were going to kind of give us, a, um, once Sherlock gets involved, to give us a sort of, that was the perspective of this megalomaniac. <laughs> but instead, it's just left fuzzy. And maybe that's something that they want to do in the latter season, but I thought it would have given his character a lot more punch because it would have made it that, yeah, what I'm seeing is convincing me that he's right during this entire time that I'm with him. And you tricked me. <laughs> and that was effective. And I would have really liked him as a catalyst for that. But um, he didn't deliver in that way, at least for the first season um the world did seem to be as bad as he's as he's saying or at least the parts of it that we're exposed to and nothing that we're not exposed to matters right everything else doesn't really matter for our story so um, i kind of found him annoying in that way but i also liked the things that you pointed out jason where like it's fun to watch a mastermind work um <laughs> it's it's really cool to see what they come up with and watch their story unfold um i would have liked to have seen a bit more um adversity failure or even effort <laughs> um he kind of comes across to me as like a mary sue for the first half where it's like he's just whatever he thinks of to do he's just he's got it and you don't even have to question it he's gonna succeed it's gonna all the pieces are gonna fall into place the pawns are gonna move where they need to be and to me that kind of lessened the enjoyment of watching a mastermind at work because there was nothing at risk really he was gonna succeed Um, I'll start with my own thoughts and then I, I want to weigh on a couple of things Jeremy and, and Jason have said. Um, I like this version of Moriarty compared to usual. I like having a Moriarty with a, a purpose. You know, usually the Moriarty that I'm used to is I'm smart, I'm bored, crime is fun, and that's why I'm doing this. And this is a Moriarty who's I like a villain who's like, hey, I think I'm doing something for the greater world. And he's not just I'm making the world I want it to be. He's I'm making the world I want it to be. But also I realize by doing this, I don't get to be a part of that world. I very much get that vibe from him that he doesn't get to enjoy the fruits of his labor that even considers himself a final sacrifice for that world. Um, especially when you, you know, we're going to expose all these evil nobles to the, the world, and then we're going to find out, hey, also that one noble was behind everything. That feels very much a part of his plan. And that's, that's interesting. That's an interesting type of villain who's like, I have these great ideals, and I know I'm doing evil for them, but it's worth it to me because of how good those ideals are. Um, so that makes him interesting. I do agree um, a little bit with Jeremy in that I wish they had showed a little bit more it's like every noble they talk about is is just like a killer, and there was almost no gray areas. <laughs> there was no. Well, not the plant guy. Like he didn't directly kill anyone. It, through his inaction, he ended up facilitating yeah. a death. I agree with you technically, but like when your inaction is literally ten steps away from you, and you could <laughs> save that person's life. That's really hard to argue that you didn't kill from, him. From <laughs> okay, but we're comparing that. You know, not caring for somebody versus I'm literally hunting people on my property. <laughs> so I, I don't I don't have as much a big as issue with it like like as Jeremy does. I just kind of see his point and, and mine more is, you know, it would have been kind of fun to see where he draws the line. Like, what about a a noble that's just robbing from the local population? Do they get murdered mm -hmm. or do they just get exposed? Uh, you know, where where does he draw his line to explore how close he is to anti-hero versus villain? Um, I think and then there's plenty of room for that in the future, too. 
my issue with him in the first couple episodes isn't it, it's part of there's no foil, there's no challenge, but also there was almost never any like a twist to it. When you watch the usually Sherlock Holmes start, you know he's going to solve the mystery, but you never know how, right? It's always like, oh, remember that thing we told you about in the very beginning? That was an important clue. Um, this was always just him being like, hey, I'm going to do these three things and these three things are going to happen and then the guy is going to die and I'll win. And then he did. And there was never any like shock to yeah. it or how did he pull that? Oh, he pulled that off. That's crazy. Uh, it was just it was almost a matter of fact for those first couple episodes with some, you know, less or more on that scale. So that that's where he he frustrated me in the beginning. What, like, and like I said, once Sherlock's on the table, once he has a challenger and he's playing chess against man, I was like, yeah, that's so cool. OK, now he's got to be one step ahead and he's he, he can't it's not going to go perfectly. He's got to counter for this. And that, that was very fun to see. He's a great character in himself i just think and it it's just that they spend five episodes <laughs> establishing that he's yeah. very good at what he yeah. does I'm like yeah i got it i was it. about to say what it three. yeah i was about to say what it have better better if it, if they'd introduced home three episodes in instead of five and i i really like the first episode because he actually solves a mystery and does some investigating and the, the first episode mm -hmm. this one we're about to talk about i really was into and then the backstory, I'm like, okay, two episodes for backstory is a little long, but okay. And then we just did two epi more episodes of, here's me just doing my thing. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, I I fully got it three episodes ago, but all right. <laughs> I think even if it wasn't Sherlock, um, if they had given him like some lesser antagonist, some inspector or something that was trying to figure out what's going on and was putting the puzzle pieces together and we got to see how did Moriarty deal with that and how did he eliminate that? That would have been an interesting twist. It could have given him an opportunity to show more of his moral grayness too. Like does what does he do to put the inspector off his trail? Does he keep him alive? Does he kill him? Does he frame him? You know, um, I think that would have helped me. Yeah. Cause he's always talking about the perfect crime. So mm -hmm. that makes it should sense. be untraceable. Yeah. I actually thought after the first episode, Sherlock was already playing the game because he says something about like London won't notice this crime didn't appear in the papers. And I'm like, oh, he doesn't want Sherlock to see it and, and start sniffing up the clues. But that, that ends up not being the case. He just didn't want London to know. Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. is this also like an, a, a Sherlock origin story as well? I mean, it does seem to be the way that Sherlock's presented, it seems to be the beginning of his career as a detective. So yeah, it could be. For, for all the times, okay, with my very limited exposure being the BBC show, this is exactly where the BBC show starts for Sherlock, too. We'll, we'll get to him, but oh, okay, it's always the exact same starting spot. Basically, when he meets John Watson and goes from guy who <laughs> finagles the police to let him help once in a while to world-famous guy because watson starts writing down the stories and people start reading them and and then he becomes real famous you All know right. that this book during uh, like the 1870s or something i can't remember exactly when it was the second most sold book next to the bible sherlock wow yeah i i think sherlock holmes is a great character i, I do but i just find it stunning like to hear those numbers uh, the reason Arthur Conan Doyle killed him was so he would be able to write something else. <laughs> right, man. I, I, I knew that. And then, and then the fan base was so upset he had to bring him back to life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's pretty. Again, funny. spoilers for <laughs> classic old. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. Um, all right. Let's. There is a. There's two other characters we meet here. Um, one is. It seems like it's his servant. But it's not. It's his brother, who's also a lord, technically, but takes on a very servant role to, to he's help. He's also Moriarty. beautiful. Yeah, but he's scarred. He's got a horrible scarred scar beautiful. on his beautiful oh, face. His hair so sparkles, though. <laughs> uh, this is Lewis. Um, this is this is his blood brother. And we're going to talk about the other brother in a second. What did you guys think of Lewis? Uh, he doesn't really become much of a character till like the last two episodes. Um, he's 
he's just kind of a stand in for the audience almost because he's the one that's exp being expositioned to most of the time. Um, so I didn't have a really big opinion for him, but I did like later on when he's like, when he perceives a threat to his brother, he is very quick in his mind to go, okay, I need to eliminate this because <laughs> this is threatening knife? our operation. Um, so I, I do, nope. I do like that. We got some insight into him that he is very much on the same page as his brother. Uh, mm. Well, that's from the beginning. If you remember in the flashback, when Albert came and asked, Moriarty about it. You can see Simon Crick, or I wrote Simon some, for some reason in my no notebook. So sorry, Lewis sneaking up behind him with a knife to, to murder Albert in case they didn't go his way. Um, so yeah, he's oh. always been like, I will stab a guy if he messes with my brother. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, he was kind of a. Uh, um, uh, it was it was a good background character for me, but I will definitely you. didn't. Yeah, <laughs> he definitely didn't get much limelight in this first 11 episodes. Yeah, uh, honestly, my only real thought about him is is at the end with how upset he gets at Sherlock Holmes. And mm. it makes me wonder if he maybe the being a noble has rubbed off on him a little bit in the wrong way, because he does very much seem to have a superiority complex, especially for his like his brother, like nobody can talk to my brother that way like my brother is better than you he's better than point. all of you mm. no well i mean it, it, that could be but to me it very much felt like jealousy like, that too yeah yeah how uh, dare you yeah. share yeah. this ability with with my brother he's my brother I, that would I, make sense too especially since he's not as quick-witted as and his as his brother so that would be frustrating for him based on the relationship as we see it so far. Either way, I just found it interesting mm. that he might end up being a wrench in the plan because his personal feelings and with Sherlock Holmes getting involved, it's kind of exposing this this mm -hmm. flaw in, on the team, right? Of uh, Moriarty's team. Um, otherwise, he maybe did the really scar is symbolic. Maybe the scar is symbolic for him being the flaw. <laughs> I kept wondering if that was going to be a thing. I was like, are they, are they twins? And that's going to be like a clue later that they're we're looking at the wrong person. Because um, at first I didn't realize they were two people. I was like, wait, which which one's which? Because um, I was wondering if they were twins. Yeah. 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 I don't think they are. So, yeah, they're not. One has beautiful eyes that are a little bit darker than the beautiful eyes his brother has. <laughs> right. And one's hair is a little <laughs> bit brighter blonde and, and sparklier. That's right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> All right, and then also we we see um, a lord visiting uh, actually the father of the the boy who got murdered, and this is Albert, who is their adoptive brother. They were adopted into his family, so he's actually the true noble. His name is Albert, but he's also very much a part of of Team Moriarty. So, what did you guys think of Albert? I thought Albert was a great driver. Or, or well, more of a catalyst for the story. Until he wasn't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he, I, I honestly really liked his character in the first couple episodes because he was very much a part of this. I, I'm a part of the class system and I hate it. I hate the way these people treat other people in my country. Um, I. I, I think they are morally bankrupt people and we need to tear down the system and his ideals matching with Moriarty's uh, ideals. It, it was cool to watch that relationship blossom into the evilness that they are. Um, and also like the just dreadful scene of Moriarty making him uh, uh, prove his worth, which we'll get to. Yeah. Um, that, that was rough to watch. And uh I, I, that was cool but then later on he just becomes money bag like <laughs> yeah I, I didn't i didn't like that he just disappeared into the background so this is kind of just a, a complaint that i have for the way that they handled the op nature of the characters in this anime right we've seen overlord we've seen mob psycho we've seen one punch man we've seen a lot of anime that have over overpowered characters right and in an anime like this the mind is the weapon 
And so really Moriarty and Sherlock later are the overpowered characters. But in all of those other anime, the side characters are interesting and they stick around and they influence the plot. In one way or another, we remember them. And sometimes they're our favorite characters. In this situation, um, in our pre-show, none of us named anybody except the primary characters as our favorite characters. <laughs> and and all these characters that are that side never characters happens. just kind of... Yeah, these guys just faded because they... I I think in trying to emphasize just how OP Moriarty and later Sherlock are, these guys just were allowed to fade into the nothingness and be just like what you're saying, Jason, where he's he's the money bags, he's the conveyance. Um, he was he was necessary to get Moriarty into a position where he could have power and could act from a noble position. And now that he's there. Well, he's there whenever he needs some kind of contact to do whatever. He's kind of the deus ex machina of whatever noble thing that Moriarty needs for his schemes. And, um, yeah, so I, I was kind of I was kind of sad with that. Plus, I really didn't like the event you talked about. <laughs> really? Like, the guy was horrible, but still. Yeah, that's the Anyways. one that's, that really stands out as, well, it wasn't quite as bad as everybody else. Horrible, but... yeah. Not, that, that punishment did not fit the crime. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Especially for a yes. someone so young. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. That, 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 that's the one that really sticks in my craw. But um, my my I, I echo your guys' thoughts on Albert, and and really all all until we get to Sherlock's cast, I actually like them better. Um, but yeah, yeah, Albert's he's just kind of there for most of it. My only one thought about him is almost the opposite of Lewis, whereas Lewis is. My brother matters more than the goal. Albert, I think, is the goal matters more than my brother's. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if that these conflicting ideals, even though right now they're all pointed in the same direction, if it's going to eventually get to a point where it kind of becomes a, a battle between these two. I could see that see that potential there otherwise what's the point of these characters why are you here <laughs> yes. yeah yeah all right so back back to the the story at hand uh moriarty does basically detective work he realized this is a serial killer he's murdering tradesmen children so that's going to be a noble because it's someone who's frequenting these shops and seeing these children and picking out his prey. He notices that one of the victims, though, was a, a homeless child, an orphan. He's like, well, that's going to be the clue to figure out who it is. Um, he talks to another orphan child and gets some information from him who had picked up the, the murdered boy's um, musical instrument to make money with and goes to where the body was and realizes there is a club where yeah. nobles can go, and there's a window that looks right down where this orphan used to play his instrument for money. Um, and then he goes there, basically figures out who sits in that window every day, figures out who this murderer is. And then Albert goes to the tailor, and he's like, hey, you remember how we were talking the other day, and you were really sad about your son, and you said, like, man, if you could just get revenge, that would be the best. <laughs> <gasps> You hey, you want to come with me? I got something that you could do. Bring your scissors. <laughs> bring your uh, scissors. Bring your scissors. <laughs> Mor Moriarty, uh, he gets attacked by the thug of this noble, but hey, Simon's here. We had that taken care of, and they ended up capturing the noble and Lewis. tying him up in a <laughs> Simon Lewis. Yes, it's going to happen <laughs> so many times. So, where like, did you get Simon? I have. I started rewatching Firefly, and that's probably oh. it. But <laughs> I wrote like, Simon. I don't think there is a Simon in no, this whole anime. I kept writing, oh. and honestly, every time I wrote it, I'm like, no, because now I know I'm going to say that out loud on the podcast. <laughs> Gold. Lewis. Good for the Gold. ratings. Yeah. Lewis. Uh, yeah, they they capture the, the Lord, uh, the noble. And, and hostile style. And yeah, and, and, yeah. Then, and then they're like, hey, Taylor, uh, we'll lock you in here, and we'll see you in... in Five minutes. Got to be quick about it. Um, and he comes what out. All in blood. barn stays in the barn. <laughs> yep. And yeah, he he murders it. Now it's. I thought this whole thing was gonna be that like Moriarty never gets his hands dirty, mm -hmm. uh, and then later he kind of starts getting his hands dirty. And I'm like, oh, okay, that wasn't. Why were you making other people murder for you later? 
okay. But I did like so this episode first episode I was I was like okay this is cool he he solved a crime very Sherlock Holmes style but then decided to do Punisher style judgment but went with the Moriarty I'm a consultant I help other people commit crimes and help this man murder um, and so I, I, all of that I liked I did um, and then oh the. You know, they say flashbacks are like a weakness in storytelling. So when you have a flashback in your flashback, that is not a good sign. <laughs> so episode two, Moriarty's on a train and he's talking to a guy about horse racing. And then he starts talking about his family. So we go into a flashback about him uh, walking down the street as a noble and giving in- information to the commoners, telling them how to to grow their potatoes, telling them how to clean Something off a stain, something. Anyway, he's giving he's giving all he's he's a fountain of knowledge and he's sharing it with the commoners. And then his brother picks him up and they go back to the mansion. And the servant of the house comes out. He's like, Ah, you need to change back into your commoner clothes. You're a commoner, even if you live here, you're a commoner. And I'm even though your brother's sick, I'm making him sweep this porch because commoners. Okay, you're a servant, dude. Maybe you get off your very short high horse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and and then we get another flashback from here about how the Lord Moriarty, the the Albert's father, uh, because there's this hot Duchess who's like adopting commoner kids is the best. He's like, yep, doing that. And his wife's like, that's dumb. You need to not do that. I hate you. <laughs> he's like, no, we're doing it. I told the hottie I would. And he's like, Albert, go pick out a kid. I know you were visiting. You, you've been helping that school of commoners. Go pick a kid. And he kind of realizes this, who doesn't have a name at this point, but it's Moriarty and, and Lewis. Um, he's like, oh, there's something special going on. He, he over here is Moriarty telling these guys about digging. And then like a couple of days later, he hears about a crime that took place with digging. He's like, wait, that can't be the same. Um, and so he does decide to adopt these. Oh my God. You're, you're skipping one scene that just, I was cringing so hard and the children, when he's making the children chant, you, oh, you, do, you were, did you, did you have that lined up to talk about? I, I did that, that. So when okay. he goes, yeah, he goes and he eavesdrops on him and then there's, uh, more already talking oh, to the children and they he's talking about like the nobles are good people and they help us but what about bad nobles but what do we do with bad nobles kill the bad nobles kill the bad nobles kill the bad nobles <laughs> do it just murder kill die 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 <laughs> yes like just doing that right there is it's so easy once you establish a pattern there to just remove the word bad it's so easy especially at that age he's seeding them that's that's what he's doing. He's it's very very bad. <laughs> I was cringing really hard at this. Except for um Albert is into that because like his brother yes. William um is a spoiled noble brat who literally stabs his maid in the hand with a fork because she didn't make the tea right. Um, and then gets her fired. Yep, and then has her fired. So Albert confronts Moriarty, asks him what his plan is, and his plan is like, yeah, I'm going to overthrow the caste system. Uh, I'm going to expose the nobles for what they are. And he's like, and this is the scene where Lewis is sneaking up behind him with the, with the knife. And he's like, <laughs> I like that plan. I would like to be of assistance to you. And so that is who he chooses to adopt. And Lord Moriarty loves it. He goes back to that hot chick. He's like, I adopted two. And one of them's sick, and we're getting a <laughs> surgery. <laughs> and he's getting a surgery. Yeah, that was funny. <laughs> you want to come back to my house, <laughs> right? Um, but yeah, uh, the, obviously the the real William, uh, very upset about this. He he forces Lewis to make him tea, and then just spills it on the ground. And he's like, "Now you got to clean it with your tongue," and. And Moriarty comes in and he's like, uh, I'll I'll take care of it. And he's like, well, no, you have to punish him, stab him with his fork. And so Moriarty stabs himself. Um, Such caricatures like and this this kind of stuff does happen sometimes in like period dramas. Right. 
you do get characters like this occasionally, but there are so many <laughs> in this anime that it just was driving me nuts. And this character, especially because he's such a young kid, like I don't understand why Albert doesn't just belt him across the face. Being his older brother, he should be able to just walk in there and do that. That tells me that he doesn't actually want to stand up for these people at this point, at least if there's himself at risk, you know, if he's going to get in trouble by his dad or something. Albert doesn't have the strength on his own. That's why he needs Morty Artie's help. Ugh. Ugh. No, that's 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 established pretty early that he's infuriated with the system that he's trapped in. Mm -hmm. um, but he doesn't have the resolve to do it on his own. Yeah, it's sad, though, that he can't even like in his own household do something. And that's... and you're uh. right. It is a valid criticism that we're only exposed to bad rich people. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the show as a whole, we only have a handful of rich people that we're exposed to to begin with. Everyone yeah, else that's, that's a rich noble is in the background that we just don't get to interact with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's a bit of framing to make Moriarty's story justified. And it does make sense. Mm -hmm. But yeah. still, such caricatures. Oof. And I mean... <sighs> There is the occasional noble who's a good person. There's the the kid who was going to marry the waitress. Um, mm -hmm. Even Moriarty himself, when he helps solve that murder, he's like, we're nobles. This is our mandate. Like, noble obligation. Help. Yeah, mm -hmm. noble obligation. Um, but yeah, this, this enemy is pretty heavy handed and like classism sucks and uh, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Fine. Uh, but it is like I said, it's just it's heavy handed and you can feel it because oh, it, it's not just I'm greedy or I'm selfish. It's I literally like to murder commoners almost every time. And like everybody that engages in some kind of evil act, they always get the evil grin. And it's like a lot of people, you know, they're probably not grinning when they're doing these things like they have other things in their mind. It may not necessarily be the enjoyment of the act so much as the desire to get whatever it is they're getting out of the act or as a result of the act. And sometimes the act, I would imagine, is not something that um, is, is not the end goal. It's not the objective. Uh, but it's always the objective in this. Like they are, they're gleeful about their evil actions. And it just feels very ham fisted. And yeah, anyways. Look, noble equals serial killer. That's it, just fact. Yeah, you can't deny that. <laughs> exactly. It, he drew that feels, on the blackboard. <laughs> it feels very anime. <laughs> For evil characters. Yeah, you're right. That's how, yeah. Like, if you think about any other evil character in any other anime, they get the giddy grin. They do yeah. uh, over the top bad things. <laughs> you are spazzing out right now, man. Your, your face is your a, video so I'm it's loving it. Wrong. I hope that's recording. <laughs> I do too. Uh, that's I, amazing. You're a lizard. I, I do actually, but Jason, I do want to say I actually would 100% agree with your point that, like, Really, in the five, six episodes, we're not going to focus on nobles that aren't serial killers and, and su not super evil. We don't we don't have time for that. Um, and this anime is trying to get to a point. Um, so maybe they shouldn't spend five episodes on it and said right you know, or, or, or maybe it's for other storytelling but maybe we yeah. start exploring the gray areas later or or, you know, meeting other nobles that are different later. Um but yeah, it's There's very also... much like the point of this is I want to catch murderers and I only do it for nobles. So every character he goes against is a murdering noble. That does make right. sense. It would, it would skew what we see. Yeah, yeah. It, it would be really cool if, you know, we've seen a lot of anime where they, uh, they have subtlety in what's going on in the background or the things that people say have double meanings or somebody says something in, the, in a bar and you overhear it and it has some other more relevant you know, information later. But I think that would have, it's a, it kind of something that they really missed an opportunity on where they could have seeded the world in the background with things that presented a more complete, fleshed out image of uh, London at this time, rather than just focusing on what we need to see for the set piece. Right. Um, yeah, that would have been cool because they wouldn't have had to really use any time for it. It would have just been like a little two seconds here. Right. One second here. Like, like a barber that murders people and then puts them into meat pies. That would have helped. Yeah, a commoner. Exactly. 
Horse pies in London. All right. Um. <laughs> all right, and then yeah, uh, they they make Albert murder his brother with a gut wound so that he'll mostly uh. survive the night. And and literally, so the brother William comes in to frame Moriarty and and Lewis for stealing silverware and. Moriarty comes in behind him and he's like, yeah, I totally saw this coming. And that's fine because <laughs> here's Albert and I'm handing him a broken stick to stab you with. And he does. And he 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 belly jabs him and then they leave him to bleed out while they rig the house to burn down. Um, and then they hide in the cellar. They burn the house down. Everybody dies in the fire, including the mom and dad. Like is, mm-hmm. William is like. And the brother William probably was going to turn into a murderer eventually. He hadn't yet, so that is mm-hmm. still a rough, rough one. The dad mom really hadn't done anything wrong, mm-hmm. uh, you know, other than being maybe a holes, but that's not a death sentence. So this, is, and honestly, I kind of like that better. Like Moriarty is willing to kill, regardless. Mm-hmm. Uh, that helps me determine for myself where his morality lies. But then we go back to the only like super serial killers. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. So this this one seems a little odd, but yeah, they burn the house down. Everyone dies except for the the three. Uh, Lewis burns his face t- to both c- make their story better that they were victims, and as a hey, I'm in to the plan to to change England. And this is my contribution since I haven't actually done anything. You guys did right. it all because I'm just a <laughs> sick guy. I'll just and, burn my face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they get out of the fire. And then we come back to Moriarty is telling a guy on the train about his family. But yes, there was a flashback in a flashback in that epi- in those episodes. And that thing drives me more crazy than when the flashback goes to the flashback. <laughs> <laughs> well, the substance of the story I liked, but you're right. A flashback in a flashback, that's pretty, yeah, that's rough. I, I I really like the scene where he was he was talking with the commoners and we go back and we find out who he was like I was into it and then we jump I didn't even realize we had jumped back but then Albert's meeting Moriarty for the first time and I'm like oh we flashed back again <laughs> my bad yeah all right next episode um this is the one where a family. Uh, a, a husband and wife bring their sick young child to the door of the local noble. They're like, the doctor is away. His, his employer, actually. Yeah, yeah. He's the, mm-hmm, the gar- mm-hmm. gardener and his wife. And they're like, hey, the doctor is away, but we know you have a personal physician. Can you please help our son? Our son is dying. He's literally standing right there. Behind, your personal behind physician. the noble, yep. He's literally right there. And the noble's like, yeah, I don't share that with commoners. What would be the point of being a noble with my own doctor if I had to let if I let commoners use them? So he shuts the door. <laughs> uh, and then we we jump forward in time to Moriarty arriving in town. He is the new math professor at the local university, even though this is just a temporary stay for him on the on his plan towards London. Um, and he interacts with the mother when he comes arrives to town. That that mom, and she's very upset just seeing him because she doesn't like nobles now. Go figure. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> and then him and Lewis and Albert are all get invited by this noble to have lunch or dinner. I think it's dinner. And they meet yeah. with him, and he's like telling them about I have heart disease. And I take this special medicine for it that quinine. we grow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what is it? Quinine. Yep, quinine. It's a bar. We... It's derived from the bark of a of a specific tree. Yep. Yeah. And they they grow it there in his conservatory, so he's he's doing just fine. And they go and he shows them off his conservatory with all his beautiful plants. He's like, yeah, my my gardener does a great job. And then we see the poor gardener who goes home and his wife has cooked a meal for three even though their kid is now dead and she's just like super depressed and super not okay, which, and neither is he just totally makes sense. The way Mm -hmm. she was staring at that boiling pot of water, I was like, please don't pick it up and pour it on yourself. Yeah. Like, yeah, she was at that level of, yeah, Mm -hmm. 
I really thought maybe she put strychnine in it or something, and she was like, I'm going to end it for both of us so we can be with our son. <laughs> That's what I thought was going to happen. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely a, a family in crisis. And then uh, Moriarty uh, meets the gardener at a pub after work one day, um, n- now knowing he knows the story. And, yeah, and basically he's like, the, the gardener's like, I didn't have a choice. He's like, you had choices. You just chose not to do anything. <laughs> and he's like, but I have a side business where I consult <laughs> on things. I could help you. And so they come, he, we basically see the plan unfold, which is they bring they go to lunch with the the noble again, and they bring him special jelly, and they have crackers and marmalade. jelly. Marmalade. A special marmalade. And it's uh, grapefruit. And they're talking about how great grapefruit is. And he's like, oh, I have a grapefruit tree. I thought I thought it didn't serve any purpose. They're like, oh, yeah, you can make all kinds of stuff. You can make juice. You can. And he's like, oh, let's start doing that. So they start making grapefruit juice. And they're having the gardener and his wife literally make it. And the gardener's wife attacks him. The gardener stops her. And, and he, he freaks out so bad that he has to take his medicine and... And he's like, you're fired. Get out of here. So they leave. And they're like, oh, that sucks. Here, have more juice. Um, <laughs> take more juice. And, and then he starts getting really sick. And, and they're like, yeah, the uh, the grapefruit juice mixed in with the drug. Uh, it's going to lower your blood pressure and kill you. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> <laughs> and where's your doctor now? <laughs> yeah. Where was the doctor? I, that's no, what I was said, wondering, too. Fetch my doctor. They're like, yeah, we're not going to do that. Yeah, we're not going to do that. Yeah. Uh, and, and so yeah, they they let him die, and then uh, the gardener and his wife are okay, and they're heading to London to work in the Queen's garden. Albert got him a job. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which, so know, good enough. Th- this was a couple of weird things because number one, it would be suspicious that they left on the day he was murdered, immediately after his murder. That would be suspicious, and then number two is. Uh, I don't know, maybe it's been inculcated into my mind because of watching so many other media instances where uh, a character has this vendetta, they want revenge, they want vengeance because of the loss of someone, and so they they get that vengeance by killing someone else, and then they realize it's hollow because they, they really miss the person that's gone, and they can't bring that person back by killing someone else, right? That's the general morality that's imposed by these stories, and I tend to agree with it. And so... When I saw these two characters and after the Count is dead or whatever he was is dead, now she's smiling and her depression is gone. I'm like, that doesn't ring true to me. Everything I've ever read or heard indicates that is not what would happen psychologically. I have a feeling things were moving very fast due to Moriarty's plans and they probably hadn't had a chance to like reflect on what they had done yet. And I'm sure that's probably going to hit them on the train. But you're right, that didn't end up getting shown in the anime. Yeah, just carried on adrenaline, maybe. Uh, two things. I don't think anyone's going to think this is a murder. Um, mm. I, I think they'll just see a guy who took his medicine and was drinking grapefruit juice and didn't realize yeah. that they it would kill him if he did. Um, or or just, or, or even if they yeah. suspect that, he had heart problems and he died of heart problems that probably wouldn't be looked at very closely. The only thing that I... I didn't see it as revenge fulfilled us, but even though I do think it was weird how happy they were instantly... Mm-hmm. <laughs> even with their son being dead but more um by letting him shut the door on that on him the gardener accepted his worldview on the state of commoners versus nobles that we are not worth saving like more already pointed out you had a choice you chose to accept his worldview and by doing that they've established we have value too to ourselves and maybe that's what makes them happy but mm. again being a father I would not be smiling. <laughs> I'd still be completely devastated. Yeah. Maybe feeling a little bit better for vengeance. Who knows? But yeah, that would <laughs> it would not be like and, and Moriarty's like, they're together now because they committed a crime together and, oh, and so they're bonded in crime. <laughs> and then the brothers are like, We all get that. We're bonded in crime when we are yeah. our <laughs> family. Yeah. What a way to rationalize <laughs> the value of crime. <laughs> um, no, I think this is uh, this is another example of you know the noble wasn't a mass serial killer. He was just mm-hmm. through inaction directly caused the death of a young child. Um, 
And so, I mean, that, in my opinion, Moriarty killing this dude was just straight up evil. It wasn't like a justifiable murder. I guess I fall in the area of like, I know for most of these, they shouldn't be killed. They should be taken to, you know, court, but um, <laughs> maybe get well, the death sentence. Of course, but it would need to be done to these people at that time. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but street justice. I don't know. Uh. I, yeah. <laughs> vigilante work um but i don't know i just get your gap irks me is that the doctor's right there the noble's right there the door's open there's at most like 10 steps separating them from the dying child so at that point i can't even call it neglect like i know that may technically be the legal term for it but that that is fully intentional that is like you intended for that person to die (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I'm 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 with Jeremy on this one. Whereas the the family, especially since like there was just jerks, but they still were burned to death. Um, mm-hmm. in in the last episode, this one, uh, yeah, if you're holding the the antidote to a poison and you don't give it to someone literally a foot in front of you, you did in my mind kill them. Yeah. If you chose to to hold the antidote, um, especially if there's no cost to you, like it it doesn't it doesn't cost you a penny doesn't cost you reputation, doesn't cost you anything. At worst, it would be seen as, oh, wow, that was a philanthropic gesture. You didn't yeah, need to do that. They're just common his responsibility, yeah. Exactly. Uh, the, the one other thing I wanted to point out is, while morally I don't agree, obviously, with, with Moriarty's things, I also don't agree with the Punisher. Uh, but I still enjoy watching the Punisher <laughs> as a character, <laughs> you know, do, do his thing. I, I can... I can mm. at least enjoy the character despite their philosophy not gelling with my own, obviously. Mm, mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. Uh, well, and, and that's what I'm really liking about Moriarty is that there's this murky situation. Does the noble deserve to die or just be punished? Uh, wait, I'm rooting for him to die. What is wrong with me? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Like a certain ender. Let him be ended. Right. <laughs> Uh, in the next episode, we see a young woman dancing on a bridge, and then she jumps down into the river below to die. Happy. And this takes oh, place. Yeah. In, this takes place in the same town because he's still teaching at the same college, mm-hmm. right? Um, and Moriarty notices one of his students is missing. He he talks with the the roommate of that student. He ends up going to their the thing, and the student's been missing for three days. Uh, he's told he's probably with the waitress that he had uh, been spending a lot of time with. He goes, he was, he's planning to go to that bar before he does a vice principal. Oh yeah. Administrator. Some, it, I think, I think that's what it was. Administrator. Yeah, he's an administrator. His name is Dudley. Uh, he's like, Hey, Hey, you're looking into that missing guy. Don't worry about that. You're, you got, you're a math teacher. I'll take care of it. You don't need to worry about that. Uh, and Margaret is like, ah, that's not suspicious at all. I'm going to go to, <laughs> right. So he goes and he talks to, uh, a waitress, but it's not the waitress. Um, it's a waitress who works at the same bar and she tells him the story of, yeah, that. Is she the that, owner? Maybe, maybe. Or just the older. Oh, no, because the administrator is the owner. She probably manages the brothel. Oh, wait, no, no, no. I'm talking about the bar. This is the bar. I don't think it was oh. part of the brothel. Yeah, I thought oh, the you're right. I thought the I lady was in my the, head. Oh, Does it matter? My man. This yeah, character, no. this character is a clue giving exposition dump, and that's it. <laughs> anyway, yeah, she tells the story. There was a waitress. This noble boy took a shine to her. He asked her to marry him. She got pregnant, and then one day a mysterious guy walked in, told her that's not going to happen, and the next thing they knew, she was dead from jumping off the bridge. Happily, happily jumping off the bridge. Um, and then we we see that Dudley is keeping the, the missing student in an opium den uh, locked up. So Moriarty calls for the two and these are his henchmen. And so we we Moran, who seems to be former military with a revolver sharpshooter rifle, which I kind of love. Um, and Fred, master of disguises and knife fights, 
Uh, and parkour. And yeah, and parkour. Yes. Yeah, yeah. He is he is a Naruto ninja in this anime. Um, <laughs> Moran's like a an older man who always has a woman in his bed, and Fred it looks like a young kid, but they're both very dedicated to Moriarty's mission. Um, so, what are your guys' thoughts on these two characters? Again, I think these are two potential great characters. We don't get a ton of time with them except for them executing their duties. Um, I think Fred is not quite as developed, but I think that's kind of on purpose because he's a quiet, I I do my job kind of character. He felt very courier-ish from uh, that other anime. Um, but uh, I really liked... Um, the. You say his name was Duncan? Moran. No. Duncan? Moran. That's yeah, right. Sure. Yeah, I really liked Moran. Uh he was he was spunky. He yeah, he had a job to do. He was fully on board with Moriarty's plans, but he was kind of riding the wave. Cause I he he definitely felt like he was the guy in the crew that didn't quite get the whole understanding of what was <laughs> going on, but he was happy to be a part of the team and do his part. Um, and also, he he definitely the suavest of everyone there. Um, oh, yeah. So uh, I, I like this personality. Um, but yeah, he, not enough screen time for either of those characters. Yeah, I don't have much to add. I did find that Moran's, uh, well, okay, his name and his sharpshooting were were both funny to me. Like he would sh- he would use his sharpshooting skills and shoot people, but sometimes it. Actually, I don't think he ever killed anyone with a sharpshooting attack. I mean, not directly. No. Um, but sometimes he would shoot people and the bullet would like move their foot or their hand and it did not appear to pierce it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, what exactly are you shooting? I think he was like shooting rubber bullets or something. That's, he was definitely yeah. shooting non-lethal rounds. Did they, did they have rubber bullets back then in like 1890? I don't know. I don't know. I haven't looked it up, but... I was, I don't know, those things are bouncing around in my head, um, and he was shooting way so many bullets, just killing me. Like you said, Troy, it was a special revolver rifle, but still. And then his name just was so close to Moron, and I, I just cracked up every time I saw him because of that. Because like you said, Jason, he really is the least, at least the one who expresses himself the most as the least uh, witty of the characters. Um, <clears throat> on my Moriarty's favorite line team. of hit, my favorite line of hit is, is when he comes around the corner, he's like, you're not supposed to ask questions. That was part of your deal. Yes. His eyes are all like narrowed and he's just like on a serious look on his face. That was great. Is there a problem? <laughs> I am excited to learn their backstory, but yeah, I agree with you guys as far as w- what's the point of these characters. I just, I just don't know yet. Mm-hmm. I think it was more justification for why things so went so well for Moriarty. <laughs> team of things doing stuff in the background to make sure things went right i i guess i did have an issue and i kind of already addressed it it's just that so far moriarty has been find a problem find someone else to deal with the problem and now he's like i have literally these two guys i can have deal with the problems for me so i don't have to go find a person to deal with the problem for me and i'm like wait that kind of took away like half of the the puzzle <laughs> if if you had mm. two henchmen who could have killed the the guy in the first episode why did you make a tailor go through that um okay well one less hurdle for him to jump right right um and, and, well he didn't he he in his morality he's serving as a facilitator to allow people to exact exact revenge if he just has his henchmen go kill people, that defeats that whole narrative of his. Right. Except for in this episode where he has his henchmen kill people. And and then the boat episode where he has his henchmen kill a guy. <laughs> well, it didn't direct. I mean, sure, he knocked him off that kill. <laughs> <him, but laughs> we're getting all Both the times, <laughs> the, the shooting literally made a person fall to their death on purpose. <laughs> And, and actually, in, in this one, so uh, I'll, I'll jump ahead. Um, he, Fred goes and gets the, the stoned out student. Uh, they take him to where the bridge is, and, and they had Dudley show up, and then they have Fred in costume to look like the girl come out of the river, and he's like, wait, I killed you. And they're like, there's the confession. That's what we needed. 
no, you, you didn't, but we're kind of going to kill you. And then we're, we're <laughs> going to make you dance to your death, just like you did to her when you drugged her up with opium and, and had her jump. Um, also, this guy has also been blackmailing. He gets students hooked on opium and then he blackmails their parents to, to make money. He's, he's horrible in multiple ways. Uh, mm-hmm. And then Moran, who won a poker game, seduced one of the waitresses so they could get into her room and have a shooting bandage. <laughs> Then starts shooting at this guy's feet, making him dance. And then it shows like a shadow figure grab him and throw him over. After he falls over the bridge to his death, uh, it's Moriarty standing there. <laughs> and I'm like, did, <laughs> did you just murder him? Is that not the no, opposite? No, no, it was, it was symbolic. It was, okay. it was death. Death was dancing with him. <laughs> but still, it was Ran who literally forced this yes. guy to die. Yes. Which kind of flies, because I agree with what you said, Jason, except for then we suddenly get these these henchmen who can help facilitate pushing people directly to their deaths. So that This would be not... second degree murder, wouldn't it? Because it's it's an indirect murder and maybe you didn't even intend it, but it just was a spontaneous thing. I don't know, I'd be first degree. But... Yeah, because <laughs> I mean, he didn't. He didn't load a, you know, a, a deadly a, a deadly round and shoot the guy in the head. Because I mean, that would have been caught. They would have recognized. Right. That's the whole point. This is to like do perfect crimes, right? I right. Didn't but you kill still... him. I just put strychnine on the edge of his coffee cup. That's all. No, but I that's what I'm him. arguing. They, they, yeah, they literally did kill him. They just did it without creating evidence. Yeah. Well, and made it look like suicide instead of you know strychnine. They oh, was did, did, did he poisoned? But it was still like, first degree murder because you intended like you carried out oh, absolutely i'm just saying yeah. they're trying to make it look like suicide or in like the next episode it makes it look like he slipped to his death instead of yes. someone actually putting a bullet I, in his head i get that but up to this point we'd had moriarty like you said facilitating other people committing the crimes but now he is right. no he's now long now his team is actively committing the crime he's targeting people to kill i see yep. it seemed like a weird switch that's all yeah. i would agree with uh, that then we get to episode six with the not Titanic. <laughs> oh my God. Yes. <laughs> it's Noah's Ark. Yeah. yeah. The no, the no it's attic. Hitting, it's hitting all the big boat names <laughs> at once. <laughs> um, uh, so this, this episode actually starts with a man being hunted in the woods. Like dogs are chasing him. A man is, is hunting him with a rifle. And then we come to this giant boat. It, it, if you've seen the movie Titanic, it's that scene where everyone's climbing aboard the boat. There's the commoners going in the lower half, the, the elite going in the upper half part. Uh, and there's uh, we meet this character um, named Enders. Mm-hmm. Blitz, Blitz Enders. Blitz Enders. Blitz Enders. Mm-hmm. And he's like, oh, I can't believe they let commoners on a boat as great as this. Oh, commoners are the worst. Can I and... just say when I heard Blitz Enders, I was like, is this a Final Fantasy character? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. It sounds like that. Or, or like... Uh, um. One of those, uh, I don't know, I just saw, wow, that's taking forever. Like a hockey player or something. Not hockey, though, like some, I don't know, I guess it's a Final Fantasy ball game is what I had in my mind. So I guess it's still Final Fantasy, but Blitz I don't know, ball. I just pictured sports. Blitzball, thank about you, Blitz. Blitzball from Final Fantasy. Yes. The 20-year-old Final Fantasy 10. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> See, that's why it takes me so long to think. <laughs> I'm that old. <laughs> that's years ago. Uh... And then the the uh, the crewmen who are letting him on happen to specifically be Fred and, Mar- and Moran. <laughs> and uh, there's there's also like a, a drunk guy who's yelling at him. Uh, this guy clearly not only is he obviously the guy who was hunting people for sport in the beginning, but he clearly does not see commoners as human beings. And he we see him like at a restaurant his reservation got canceled on him and he's freaking out and he's yelling and he's screaming and this little girl spills juice on him and then he's really losing his 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 uh stuff and and moriarty's like hey take my handkerchief it's all good man we're buddies now and we're buddies but he's still very cranky and then we see moran literally has hired a man to pester this guy <laughs> yeah, and we're told funny. <laughs> this man is also a rapist murderer. Mm-hmm. Um, and so Moriarty is he's a pawn to be sacrificed, but that so they got a very what they consider an evil man. 
They Which said a, a thief to catch a murderer. A murderer to catch a murderer. Um, I, I like that he had to also, the story had that he's a rapist murderer because our main characters are also murderers and that can't be that evil. Yeah. So we right. need to add another layer of evil so it's okay to yep. sacrifice. Um, and he's, yeah, he's there to, to pester Blitz Enders. And then uh, Moriarty is walking through the ship and he hears these girls who are chatting up this guy who's who's able to pick out your profession just by looking at you. And they're like, dude, do that guy. And he looks at Moriarty and he's like, that is a mathematician. And he points out all the reasons why. And you know who this is. The anime doesn't tell you. The anime waits mm-hmm. two episodes to name this character like you have no idea who it is. Who could this yeah. super observational deduction genius be? It's weird. <laughs> who I knows? Know. I was it's... really hoping that he wouldn't say just mathematician. I, I, I was really hoping that he was going to say something like, oh, he he wants you to believe he's a mathematician or something like that. Like just something subtle enough where you know that he sees through it. But it made it seem like he doesn't see through it. Oh, that guy, he murders people. He, he's a criminal. <laughs> I thought he would say he's a killer and then be like, I'm just kidding. Um, yes, that's what I was looking for. Yeah. But uh, this is Sherlock Holmes. And we need to come back to this scene because there is something I want to talk about in this scene. But now we, we reach Sherlock Holmes in episode six. We're over halfway through the anime. The the antagonist has arrived. <laughs> Uh, uh, Jeremy, what's your thoughts on Sherlock? I actually really enjoyed Sherlock Holmes, and it might might be just because he showed up and brought what I thought was missing. You know, he's funny. He's um, he's I would I don't know if I'd say he's gregarious, but he kind of seems like it sometimes. But he's also a bit dour, and he's also like he he flows. He has different facets to his personality. Um, you know, as is the case in the story, he does have a bit of an opiate addiction himself, and Moriarty points that out and it bothers him. Um, but you really get to see him as a character in all kinds of moods and reacting to things and being frustrated and just joking around. And it, it was so nice to have this sort of lightness brought back to the anime uh, or brought to it in the first place with his presence, but at the same time giving him enough depth that he was an interesting counter to Moriarty. Um, one thing that I absolutely loved about him was that solving mysteries, uh, is is just it's a way for him to get a high like he loves it it is so important it's the sole reason he does it is because it's a game to him and yes i realize that that's also somewhat the case in the books but it's not to the degree that they presented in the anime (laughs) um and i appreciate that because that was really fun to see there's a particular scene we'll get to later where he's just filled with glee like he's speechless with glee because of the way the story went and uh i I really liked it those scenes like that with him are cool (laughs) you know we've seen a lot of characters get an animeification and i think this is one of my favorites because we get this just anime protagonist slapped over top of a high level deduction personality um and he uses that flamboyance of a uh, confident anime protagonist. Um, he, uh, I, I think one thing I appreciated because you know we've all, we've all seen different forms of Sherlock Holmes. There wasn't this like zooming in on the thing he's talking about, or like some sort of like flashback scene of, you know the the description of what his observation one, he just says it and we get to see the facial reactions of both of the characters during these moments. Like when you said the opioid addiction that he caught was, uh, you know, bothered him. The look on the, the stunned look on his face was perfect. Like, huh, a little bit of a chemical abuse issue. And he's like, Oh God, (laughs) he caught me. (laughs) (laughs) This is great. But, um, (laughs) But not only that, throughout the rest of the anime, yeah, he's, um, I just like the way his character flows in the storytelling. Mm -hmm. It took me a little bit to get used to this initial encounter. I was like, this is a Sherlock I've never seen before. He's literally flirting with three women. (laughs) 
I don't know if I've ever seen a Sherlock that like is that flirty. Robert Downey Jr.'s, I guess, was a little close uh-huh. with one particular woman. But yeah, this is he's a bit of an anime scamp, a little bit of a right. Yes. Take a little yes. Naruto and put it into Sherlock Holmes. And it took a little to get used to, but I was into it. I was like, I just accepted this is anime Sherlock Holmes. And then I was fine. Uh, so, yeah, to, to jump on what you guys said. I, and I do like, just like you said, Jeremy, that the the puzzle is a, is a thing. That, that has very much become a part of who Sherlock is in modern pop culture. That, that is in the BBC series. Even... Um, Dr. House is basically medical Sherlock Holmes, right? He has to mm-hmm. have a puzzle. He has to have, he has drugs to, to help deal with his stuff. Um, and so, yeah, I like, I like that they included that in this character. He is, is that he, a relevant reference anymore? Dr. House, <laughs> a known reference. <laughs> is it, is it not? What was that? Like six months ago? That show was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah, sure, right yeah. With, like final fantasy 11. It, it was yeah. Right after final fantasy. <laughs> 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 uh yeah um but yeah so look it, there hasn't been that many sherlock holmes stories lately i just god i loved house that was such a good show anyways go so yeah i really like this sherlock holmes i i like the anime version of him as a fan of the character uh it was cool to see them do this take and to see him kind of just ha- being a funner character than he usually is it's not what i want to see benedict cumberbatch do i i think that's still the the sherlock i want to see but yeah if i'm gonna watch an anime about sherlock holmes let's make him an anime character let's go for it and it worked <clears throat> all right so back to the scene because sherlock deduces what his job is basically because of the way he looked at stairs <laughs> yeah he recognized that he was looking at the golden ratio right and, and, and then so Moriarty is like, I'm going to do this back. And he doesn't say specifically like what Sherlock's job is, but he points out a bunch of stuff on him. And then Moriarty leaves. And this really caught me because I was like, there's no reason for Moriarty to do that. There's no reason to pull this attention to yourself. But your ego said you had to. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So we've had this character who's been flawless nonstop. And he actually, in this story arc, not only makes a mistake here, but he makes a mistake, we find out at the end, that Sherlock is able to pick up on. And that's when I was hooked. I'm like, okay, he's a bee in your bonnet. You couldn't walk away without taking the challenge. You had to take the bait. Yes. <laughs> as much as that's usually the on the opposite foot, we usually see Sherlock have to go against the challenge. It was cool to see this infallible villain for these so many episodes stumble right here. And it seems so small. It seems like, oh, they're just showing how smart he is. No, he did not need to do this. This had nothing to do with the mission. It was just a random guy talking to him, but he had to prove he was smarter. (laughs) And I love that. And it does make you wonder about Lewis's worries about, like, why are we... uh, you know, letting this happen. Why are we really pulling in Sherlock Holmes? <laughs> because Moriarty can't help himself. And I <laughs> that is very enjoyable to me. That's why this anime got better in my mind. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, then we get back to the, the murder. Basically, uh, Blitzenders, he gets a telegram that his house is burned down, which isn't real, but <laughs> they fake a telegram that. And so he is at a boiling point with his stress and he's like i'm going to just murder someone and he means it literally and he takes that guy who's been bothering him and he's like hey let me make it up to bumping into you earlier i'll take you back to my room for a drink um the guy's like cool i'll go get a drink and then bother him more that's perfect and uh blitz takes a letter opener and stabs him to death which of course Moriarty's crew is, has been spying on him and is fully aware. So Moriarty knocks on the door and he and they pick the lock, even though he had locked it. And he walk, I'm just walking in. Oh my God, you're with a dead body. Totally and, unexpected. And, and Blitz is like, he was robbing me. He's like, it doesn't look like he was robbing you, but you know what? I believe you, but no one else will. We better dispose of the body. And they they take it to the balcony and they throw it off the side of the boat into the ocean. Except for Moran and Fred have a net beneath them <laughs> and catch the body. I kind of wish they didn't show that part. That's the one thing yeah. this anime doesn't do very well. They don't let you just have a twist. They could have revealed that later. 
And then that's been like, why is the bo- dead body walking around? Did they why, did, why did Moriarty bump into him on purpose? Right I don't here? know. I was trying to figure that out, too. I, I assumed at the time he was putting something on him, but I, I guess maybe just so he wouldn't look down over the, the balcony. Oh, that's a good idea. That's the only thing I could think of. I don't even know if that's true. I don't want to give credit where it's huh. not due. Yeah. yeah. The other I, thing that... Go ahead. Oh, yeah. That, I just uno- I noticed that and I was like waiting for the payoff and it just never came. Yeah, me too. Uh, the other thing that I was wondering about was how telegrams work because I thought they required a wire and in 1880s they did require a wider a wire. As far as I know, they've always required they more a wire. Good, didn't they? Huh? They well, yeah. Good, didn't they? But it has to transmit through a wire that's connected to the telegram receiver from the sender. So how did they get that telegram to him on the boat? It had to have come on in a batch of telegrams that were like given to the boat ahead of time like i don't know it just it it doesn't make sense it wasn't the first day of the voyage so that means it would have just sat there's no reason they wouldn't have delivered the telegrams on the first day of the voyage if they came on board Uh, are can you really talk to how fast telegrams were delivered on cruise liners in the 1800s maybe it takes all day to get them all out i'll need to use my wiki skills (laughs) Yeah, exactly. I don't know. That just bugged me, though. Was, come on, man. Telegram takes a wire. Come on. You've been busted, on, anime. Man. Fix yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your telegram logic is flawed. Yes. Right. Uh, the the next night. So the big thing about this ship is they're going to be featuring the first ballet to be presented on the ocean. And it's amazing ballet. Dude. Yep. So, so there's this big theater and there's this amazing ballet going on. And Blitz has his buddy who looks kind of like one of the lo- nobles who have already been murdered. <laughs> yes. Would, it looks like actually, the father of the Moriarty's. Yes. But he's not. Uh, he's just a guy. Uh, and they reused the art assets. <laughs> it's not a thing you can do with drawings, but right. still. <laughs> so. They watch the first act together in his balcony, and then this guy is like, I, I, someone saved me a seat on the floor, and I just, oh, I'm so excited to go sit down there and well, be like, oh, they well, established it. early on this guy was like a connoisseur of ballet. Like, he was right. a he, ballet expert. He had so talked to Albert getting a, a close seat too. was like really exciting for him. Which is interesting because he doesn't mind sitting next to commoners. Yep. He's literally going to sit in amongst the commoners, which, you know, they don't target him for murder, so maybe that's kind of a point in. Mm-hmm. that favor that they they kind of use this guy it, this is one of the reasons why i thought maybe it was all just through moriarty's lenses it's because there's there's every now and then there's something you know so as soon as he leaves moriarty shows up and he's like dude that guy you didn't murder uh he's here and he's in the crowd and he's like no to, to the left no third seat to the right come on <laughs> I've never seen an anime character need so much description and finding something just so the plot would move forward. <laughs> but yeah, so the dead guy is sitting in in the in the um, crowd. Blitz runs after him. When he gets there, the seat's empty, and they're like, oh, he just went out that door. So he chases after him, and he sees him at the end of the hall, and he starts pursuing him. It's Fred in disguise. Mm-hmm. And then eventually he gets to lower parts of the ship, and he finds... Uh, him dead, but he's dead again. You know the, the it, they it's the actual body, and he's like, "Well, I'm gonna make sure this time." And he just starts stabbing it and stabbing it. He's having so much fun stabbing it. He doesn't realize <laughs> the floor is an elevator lifting up, and he's he's on the main stage of the ballet, and everyone's watching him stab this guy. And they're like, "Oh, he's killing a guy. That's not good." And <laughs> he starts yelling at them like, "This is Noah's Ark, and you're all just cattle." And his lord friend is like, uh, maybe, but you're a murderer, and that's bad. So he goes to attack his noble friend, and Sherlock Holmes does his spin, flippy kick, stops mm-hmm. him. Uh, and then uh, the Blitz just runs off, and no one stops him. <laughs> and he runs off, and Sherlock goes, and he inspects the body, and I was like, ooh, that's a big mistake. <laughs> right? Even though, okay, Sherlock misses something. Oh, no, does he pick it up? Does he pick up on the cigarette burn on the head? Uh-uh. I, I, he I don't did think not. he did. That, Which I was that hoping he would because they deliberately showed that as well. Yeah. Day-old rigor mortis <laughs> definitely makes sense. I, I think most... 
criminologists or of that type would, would probably notice that. So, uh, yeah, when they point out, I'm like, oh, yeah, that, that would be easier to catch. But I thought, like, oh, he's going to catch the burn mark and be like, where did the burn mark come from? Mm-hmm. But, also, and, it was weird because that was a decorated letter opener, not a knife. Yeah. So why would he be carrying that behind the stage anyways? Like, yeah. Uh, Blitz crawls onto the top of a mast and he's like, ha ha ha, you're all beneath me. <laughs> he goes King Kong on him forever. <laughs> he literally does. I'll be up here forever. You can never get me. <laughs> and then some Moran shoots like the ropes away from him and is, is oh, he, out first from under- he shoots the sole of his foot so that he mm-hmm. loses traction. I'm like, well, what are you doing? Like, you're literally pulling strings to the point where you're like, okay, now slide down a little bit. Okay, good. Now, oh, you're reaching out? Okay, I'll shoot your hand. Now you'll fall. Ah, oh, just ridiculous. Uh, and then he ends up falling to his death into the ocean. And, and then I we was skip- hoping he would hit the deck. Yeah. It bugged me because he should have. The ship doesn't, it's not moving yeah. fast enough for him not to land on the ship. Fix your falling logic, anime. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's wrong. You're right. Come no, you're, on. I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> but I'm trying to, to move forward. Um, yeah. It, we, we, see Mar- we see Moran and talking to Mar- the crew. The Moran's or Marardi's crew is talking later. And he's like, hey, yeah, that Sherlock guy might be a problem. You guys didn't see what happened when we got off the boat. And Sherlock comes up to him and he's like, hey, guess what? There was something else behind the murder because that body was already dead. Someone wanted us to see a murder. Isn't that crazy that I only told you about this? <laughs> <laughs> it's like he already knows. Yeah. Uh, and he's like, that guy might be a problem for us. Th- this oh, scene I- very <laughs> much felt like a Columbo scene. Uh huh. Hey, oh, hey, I just grabbed one more thing I want to ask you. <laughs> yeah. Sherlock <laughs> uh-huh. like, does say his motto, though, which always makes me happy. You know, if you. Remove all the possibilities, whatever remains, no matter how impossible. He says that, and, and that that makes me smile. Mm-hmm. Then we get to episode eight, and a new anime starts. And honestly, guys, I was like, why wasn't this just the anime? <laughs> this is really good stuff, mm-hmm. and it, it's it does benefit from what's been established, right? Knowing Moriarty's pulling the strings in the background and he has an ultimate goal and that, you know, Sherlock is now another pawn in the game and not just a game player like usual um, is a benefit, but every character was almost more compelling (laughs) in this part of the story. I think what the first couple episodes established was it wasn't superhero going against supervillain. This was really smart dude going against supervillain because sure they were equals in mental capacity, but Moriarty has every other advantage possible within this time period. He has class advantage. He's got money advantage, resource advantage. He's got a full team. Like we know so much more about Moriarty than possibly we would have. And I I think I can't believe you just dissed the irregulars like that. Oh, (laughs) Sherlock has a team. Street urchins. They're a little smelly, but they're a team. Right. (laughs) I always say that because they're getting their own Netflix show where the the irregulars battle supernatural events while Sherlock's too busy being high on opium. Um, Oh, jeez. Oh, hey, if it's got supernatural events in it, I'm, I'm game. That sounds interesting. Anyway, sorry, I, I didn't mean to interrupt you with that big of a No, no, it's fine. I was basically done. I was basically saying that I th- that's what part of the reason I liked the first fight of that episode. We got to know the supervillain intimately, and it's not just another superhero going after him. It's just a really smart dude. And um, I, I, I really like that dynamic, that Sherlock is basically in a position of always being underdog in this particular mm-hmm. situation. Yeah, I was um, I was thinking about it, too, while I was uh, watching this episode in particular, where I was I was wondering the same thing you did, Troy, where it was like, this is so good. Why didn't they start with this? And then I thought, well, what would it have been like if they did start like this? And I think it would have been very much like most other anime. (laughs) The difference that we're talking about, even though it's not necessarily a good thing for two of us, (laughs) even though you like it, Jason, so it's cool. But (laughs) even though two of us don't really like it, um, it wouldn't be there to talk about. Because if we didn't know anything about Moriarty and he was just gradually revealed to us, that would take the the standard storytelling uh, 
pattern and methodology. We'd have uh, Sherlock, and he would just be like, oh, we're getting to know Sherlock, we're getting to know his fun friends, and his, and his getting a little test of him here, test of him there. Ooh, bigger pictures coming out. We don't know anything about these henchmen. They're so mysterious. Then we learn about the henchmen, and we get, ooh, there's Moriarty. What's this enigma? And that's the formula that's used in so many other anime. And I'm, I wonder if it was deliberate to avoid that formula and try to make something new. But that formula works. So, I don't know. There's pros and cons to it. Well, yeah. This formula worked for me, and you two are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you can have I, your opinion, even if it's like, wrong. <laughs> like I said, I do I do 100% think this part of the story benefits from everything that has come before. You yeah. know, it, it is giving it a step up, even though I think this section is just so much better. Mm-hmm. I have to admit, without those seven episodes before it, it just that that does give it a boost. It's like um, a slow burn slog. <laughs> but yeah, but we we kind of slow burn. <laughs> <laughs> we start anew basically, and we start with Sherlock. Um, he is not a famous detective yet. He does consult for Scotland Yard. He his rent is due, and he can't afford it. Um, and we meet his landlady, who in this version is a young younger Suderi who clearly has feelings for him and she Uh has feelings for her and I'm like my my daughter who you know who's a loves Sherlock the TV show too is like why isn't she old I'm like no this is so much better shut up (laughs) (laughs) so uh but yeah your guys' thoughts on Miss Hudson I love this she is so great she and I love the dynamic of we have you know, hero of the story who can't pay his rent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it just kind of shows the down and out nature that he's in and that, you know, sure, he's a, you know, a amazing deduction specialist and he helps out Scotland Yard, but obviously not enough to pay the bills. <laughs> his job is um, waiting. <laughs> yeah. And that uh, I, I, I actually really enjoyed the little time we got with this character um, and my I, I love the interviews of flatmates. <laughs> oh, that was so good. So <laughs> no, I really enjoyed the uh, back and forth that she has with Sherlock, where she's, you can really see the, it's a mixture of motherly, but also like definitely interested, like you were saying, Troy. And uh, yeah, no, I, I really enjoyed it. I actually kind of prefer this to the way she's usually presented. Yeah, usually she's just kind of, putting up with it and, and overwhelmed by Sherlock. Uh, the the scene where he's like, she's asking for the rent and he's eating an apple and he like, <laughs> he's, yes. he even does that. The show, how different the Sherlock is. He does the anime, like rub the back of my head, main protagonist. Whoopsie. <laughs> like just a scamp. Gotta love me. Uh-huh. Right. Uh, uh, but basically uh, a doctor friend of, of Sherlock shows up and he's like, well, I, I might know somebody. And uh, this is a very standard story for Sherlock, right? The Hey, I need a roommate. I know a guy. Uh, bring him over. And then we meet John Watson. Uh, so what do you guys think of this version of John Watson? <laughs> well, before we get the Watson, we get a montage of about eight different yeah. unqualified people. <laughs> and I think because I was expecting him to go, you know, oh, I've got the perfect person for you. And then we would meet Watson. no. We we meet a hiring actor, the homeless guy who wants a place to live for free. It was my favorite. <laughs> mm-hmm. so also, that, a that guy a that's touch. there's a um a guy dressed as a woman that comes from a brothel and says, oh, I might be bringing men home." <laughs> Is that okay? But, yeah, uh, but each of these characters, it sounded like they were voiced by Sherlock's voice actor too, which was cracking <laughs> me up. That'd be great. Um, no, I actually really enjoyed this version of Watson he wasn't a bumbling buffoon he wasn't a lesser person he was very much on par with Sherlock as far as personality and importance to their dynamic and that they were more of a partnership than they were it was just oh there's cheeky home uh Watson tagging along with you know master Sherlock um I really liked their friendship um, and he brings a lot to the story uh, as far as, you know, grounding for Sherlock. There's one scene that I didn't like, but other than that, I have no complaints about Watson. I thought he was really good. 
uh, that one scene is a particular moment where Sherlock is doing something and Watson thinks it's going to be illegal. Sherlock doesn't do it, and Watson breaks down in tears, does the general pretty consistent anime trope thing where he yeah. falls down and starts screaming Sherlock's name while hugging him. And I'm like, that's just not that character. That's not no. him. Yeah, you're right. It's it's not my favorite iteration of, of John Watson, but it definitely it, it served its purposes. It got the... I don't always have to put up with Sherlock's crap. I, I love that about yeah. a, a Watson. I love when they stand up to Sherlock and it's like, yeah, okay, you are awesome, but you're not that awesome to talk to me like this. I'm out. <laughs> it happened quick, too. Yep, yep. Uh, so I, I did like that about him. Um, he seemed a little bit quick to jump onto the bandwagon, but that is kind of a classic Watson. He likes adventure, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but they didn't really get time to explore that. He does kind of have to take a bit of a back seat because we are on the eighth episode and it's time to go into <laughs> to the finale. So yeah, he does suffer from that a little bit, I think. All right. So they uh, after meeting Watson, they all go out to drinks with Miss Hudson. I, I, this is the scene where I'm like, oh, Sherlock has a thing for Miss Hudson is when he goes to the bathroom and he comes back and she's talking with Watson. And he looks like, oh, she talks with another guy. Uh huh. Well, that's not I'm getting, getting chummy. Yeah, they, yeah, they <laughs> I'm like not this. a fan of that. <laughs> uh, but then Lestrade shows up, uh, you know, head inspector of Scotland Yard, for those who don't know Sherlock. And Sherlock's like, oh, you're bringing me a case. I'm going to get money. <laughs> and he's like, no, uh, you're under arrest. There was a noble who was murdered and he wrote your name in blood. So clearly it had to have been you. <laughs> Sherlock's that like, works. Uh, I, I think you're absolutely right, though. If Moriarty had a history with Lashard already at mm -hmm. this point, I think that would have been much more interesting um, if they had at least had some interactions of he's on like Moriarty's on Lashard's radar, but Lashard can't get anything on him. Mm -hmm. So, no, but that doesn't happen. Holmes is no. taken to Scotland Yard. Uh, we, we see the character Gre Gregson, who always hates Sherlock, and he's so happy to have him arrested. <laughs> Sherlock, of course, mocks Scotland Yard. You know, you guys are doing a great job arresting the wrong guy, as usual. <laughs> um, they have footprints on the scene that match his shoe size. They have his gun I'll there. be assistant investigator. <laughs> Where the bullets match his gun, I think. Is yeah, that's it. Yeah. And so he's arrested. He asks to be taken to the crime scene. You know, tell Lestrade, this wasn't me, but take me to the crime scene. And Lestrade gives in and takes him and Watson. They ask, Sherlock says, Watson, I need your help. So they go there. They, they look at the dead body. Um, Sherlock looks around. Watson does his thing looking at the body. So then Sherlock points out, OK, here's why it wasn't me. That guy didn't write my name. It's huge thick block letters he's got tiny little hands he's got <laughs> tiny tiny little hands he couldn't have written it uh, obviously someone with fatter fingers um, also this was not done by a skilled killer there the bullets are randomly placed around the chest it was just a it was clearly a passionate crime however the everything else was clearly enacted with a careful plan so there is now there's a killer and a mastermind behind him and they don't really believe him. And, and he finds something and pockets it and then slips a note to John Watson. And then when they're leaving, he's like, Lestrade, let me escape. I'll catch the real killer. And I'll let you have all the credit. And Lestrade's like, all right. Uh, <laughs> and he almost crashes the, the wag uh, carriage. Yeah, carriage. And then Holmes bolts. And then he meets Watson, who that's what he had written on the note, beat me at the under this bridge. And they... Um, he reveals that he found a ring at the crime scene and it was the killer's ring and there's a, a woman's name written in it. I think it's Lucy. Yeah, because it was made and, for meaty hands. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and he, no, because it's the wife's ring. It's the one. She's got meaty hands. <laughs> I thought I thought it had her name in it because it was his ring. No, no it, it was hers. But yeah, it wouldn't make sense to her to write her own name in the ring, but I'm pretty sure yeah. it was hers. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that didn't make sense to me, but okay. Mm -hmm. Anyway, he's like, the killer is going to want this back. And also we have, Mor Moriarty has made an appearance and, and 
yeah, this anime not very good at cinema mysteries. Moriarty's like, it was me. I'm behind yeah. this. <laughs> and he shows him like telling the killer like, hey, set this up. And then Moriarty tells uh, his crew like, I'm testing Sherlock. I want to see what what he does. I want to see how good he is. Um, so they put an ad in the paper for the ring, and so the killer obviously wants it back but instead a little old lady shows up for it she's like it's my daughter's ring she lost it and watson's like all right here you go um and then she runs off and then and sherlock follows her she starts doing ninja moves down the alleyway so he starts fighting her spry old lady (laughs) and it's fred and then fred like parkours naruto jumps up to the roofs of london (laughs) okay there was one cool moment here, and that's when Sherlock punches him in the old lady face, and it's porcelain, so part of it breaks off. And then mm-hmm. Fred's standing up there on the roof looking down at him, and you see part of Fred's face, but you also see, like, this old granny porcelain face. That was a cool picture. Like, that moment, yeah. I was like, Very ah, gothic, I like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, uh, how did he not realize that it was a porcelain granny face? Even Watson looking at that? Like... Yeah, the, the face was moving. <laughs> yeah. Was animated was... and everything. <sighs> Get your porcelain logic right. <laughs> <laughs> Please. <laughs> uh, how many times do I have to do that before? It's like, okay, no, they're, they're really not paying attention to details, clearly. Right? <laughs> um, funny. <laughs> Watson runs up. He's like, oh, they got away. Now we'll never solve it. And Holmes is like, no, I, I solved it. It's fine. Um. <laughs> he he has Watson go like sit in a bar and then he comes back with a file and they get in a taxi and he's like yeah here's the thing about the victim the victim used to be a womanizer and he would do stuff to women and he did it to this farmer's wife and she had bruises and then she committed suicide um, and that guy's name is that also uh, oh I forgot the part where we, we met the irregulars hey these street urchins uh, work for me not for free give us stuff <laughs> uh, which I liked because um, I was kind of worried they would leave that out I, I, I was worried Sherlock Holmes would be the hero of the nobles especially with how well we've been shown you know the mm-hmm. nobles are a bad system I was like please don't make Sherlock just the nobles guy and the fact that he works with the, the irregulars is good enough for me. Uh, anyway, yeah. also he's poor. Can't pay rent. <laughs> he's like, hey, and they found out it was. I had realized I saw tracks that it had to be a taxi driver. The taxi driver is the only one who could have been the killer. Also, we're in that killer's taxi. How you doing, Mister Killer? I'm doing great, Mister Holmes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, there's a BBC episode of Sherlock that that the killer was a taxi driver spoiler um <laughs> so <laughs> nice. I, I there there must be a real real sherlock Holmes story where there, there's a taxi driver killer because mm-hmm. that's twice now i've seen that be used um that makes sense. anyway taxi driver takes him to a uh, cemetery slash church and he's like okay yeah it was me i'll make you a deal i'm dying if you kill me uh that guy standing up there it's fred he'll come down and tell you who's behind everything and here's a gun. And Sherlock's like, all right, that works for me. And then Watson pulls a gun on Sherlock. He's like, don't do it. This is wrong. And then Sherlock shoots at the guy's feet. He's like, kidding. I wouldn't want a great mystery to be spoiled. I want to solve it myself. And so they arrest. Uh, his it's like he's is... saying no to cheat codes. Right. <laughs> it's really hard to do. But and then it'll make the game better. <laughs> the best part is what happens later when he, he's so frustrated that he can't beat the game. He's like, oh, if I had the cheat code. <laughs> yes. Yes, exactly. <laughs> if I had just can I turn the guy. Can I turn the difficulty down a little? Yeah. <laughs> um, however, this impresses Moriarty. So Moriarty tells the crew, like, this is the guy we've been waiting for. Because Moriarty has explained, we're going to send London into crime hell to just blow up the class system. And then now he's saying, but we need a hero for this play we're putting on. And Sherlock, who was not willing to murder a man just to get the end of the... They even and, and Fred even points out, he's not like us. We'll do whatever to win uh, to get our goal. Sherlock has limits, and so they he can be used. Or will fit the okay. role. Okay. He has limit. He follows the law. <laughs> he has a moral code that is yeah. more than just his immediate perception. 
But isn't that what every supervillain's thing? Like, ah, you'll never beat me, Superman, because you have a line you won't cross. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Until he punches a hole through Joker. Oh, oh wait. Wrong game. Wrong wrong universe. <laughs> Spoilers for that game too. Uh <laughs> yes. What happened in the first like, Yeah, it's, yeah, minutes. you're right. It's the opening scene. You're right. You're right. <laughs> uh, but like But said, isn't Joker sure. still a character you can use in that? Alternate dimension Joker. Where we're getting oh, okay. we gotta we gotta wrap this up. <laughs> <laughs> Sherlock, he becomes world famous for this, even though he did try to give all the the um, give everything to Lestrade, the credit. Uh, God found out that he solved this murder, and so now he's become the world famous detective. People are coming to him with classic cases. Uh, John's journaling them like he always does. Uh, basically, we're now into standard Sherlock Holmes territory, and he's growing and he's more bored de- out of his mind. He's bored. <laughs> yeah. He's depressed. And he wants to find what well, he doesn't know, but Moriarty. He, he, they, that's the mystery he wants to get onto. Um, and to the point where, like, he's playing violin and, and, the, and the opium smoke is, like, flying oh, around yeah. and taking the shape of, of, the, of the killer from the last episode being like, you could have had it all. You could have had the answers. <laughs> you um, had the cheat code. To the point uh-huh. where... <laughs> Sherlock fires a gun because he knows Lestrade is down the street getting the uh, shave to bring Lestrade to his house thinking there's a gunshot. And he's like, Lestrade, has there been any nobles who died? And he's like, well, over in York, there was a guy who went out for a walk and he just died out mysteriously. And Sherlock's like, I'll take it. That's got to be it. They go to York. They investigate the crime scene, and there's just nothing suspicious at all. And he's like, I guess it was natural causes. And so he's all pissy, and he's grumpy, and he's like, Watson, give me some matches. I'm going to smoke. Watson's like, you smoke too much, and you need to calm down. He's like, don't tell me what to do. You're not my dad. Uh, <laughs> and they, they have a big fight, and Watson's like, look, I don't have to be treated like this. I guess we're done being partners. And No, <laughs> that's not really what pushes him over the edge. He goes... Oh. Why right. did you stop me from killing the the dude that I could have got all the answers from? And he's like, well, if murder is your way to get what you want, I don't want to be friends with you. Which is also hilarious because Watson didn't stop him. <laughs> Sherlock right. chose, uh, yeah. but he needs someone to blame. And yeah, yep. so, yep, the partnership dissolves. Watson locks himself into his own cat, into their cabin, so he can't. Literally so shouting sh- in there. Yep. Yes. Sherlock is like, fine, I'll just go eat in the dining car by myself. Um, <laughs> and who's company. such a spat. <laughs> and, and who's riding in the dining car but William, James, Moriarty, and Simon. And Simon's like, Lewis. Oh, dang it. <laughs> <laughs> we're almost at the end and I was doing so well. <laughs> you were. Lewis is there. He sits with them. He's like, oh, I want to talk to you about this case I have. And Lewis is like, I could just kill him right now. I could just stab him. I don't I don't like this guy. I don't trust this guy. I don't like how my brother's being chill with him. And then starts reaching for his knife. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Sherlock is telling him all about, hey, there's a there's, there was this killer, but there was actually a mastermind behind it. And I you know what though? I went and I talked to the killer and he told me that the mastermind was you. And Lewis is, Lewis is like, what? That can't be true. We, 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 we watched that guy the whole time. No one ever came to talk to him. That's got to be a bluff. But if my brother says it's a bluff, then he'll know that he was the mastermind. Well, of course, Moriarty's not phased at all. He's like, I can't. That, that'd be really hard to prove. And I can't really unprove it either. And Sherlock's, ha ha. That's that. I was just kidding. I was just joking. And then they're talk. He's talking about like, wouldn't it be great, though, if you were the killer? And Moriarty <laughs> says, this whole thing is in Japanese, but this one line is in English. Catch me if you can, Mr. Holmes. Oh, my goodness. That I, was awesome. Yep. Me and Jeremy both picked this as our favorite moment yep. of, of the anime. So, Jeremy, I'll let you say some stuff about it, too. Oh, I just I just love the way that he leans back and he just kind of puts his arm across the chair when he says it. He's really getting into that. I am the super villain and I'm going to call you out. And I'm going to be completely open and honest about what is really happening right now. And Sherlock's response is what got me. I I love it because his eyes start quivering 
and his mouth just drops open. He is so filled with glee and joy because that's basically just giving him all the evidence he needs to know that, yes, this is the person who's orchestrating it. Now he just needs to find the evidence to prove it. The game is afoot. And I was thinking about this especially because I mean, the whole thing about Sherlock is that he's super observant. So you think he didn't notice that Lewis was having some uh, issues with the things he was saying out of the corner of his eye? Of course he did. So he's got all of the um, circumstantial evidence of their reactions to now know, okay, I have a lead. I'm not at a complete blank. I'm not without confirmation on anything. And it was just done so well. Uh, This one scene um, really made the whole episode for me. <laughs> and I did love how Moriarty qualified the catch me if you can, Mr. Holmes with is what probably the mastermind would say if yeah. Yeah. I was him. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I also love so they're speaking Japanese, but they're in England. So they're supposed to be speaking in English, but they're in suspension of disbelief language, no problem. But he says this in actual English. It's meta. <laughs> so what language did he switch to from English to what to make this statement to him? Also, it, <laughs> yeah. And uh, what, what was really cool about this is, is what would they do in the English dub? How would you emphasize these words like that? The, the fact that he switched to actual English for this statement it chills down my spine as much as it doesn't make sense in, in you know, <laughs> suspension of disbelief of the language. If you did an English dub with this anime, you have him say it in French. Like I, <laughs> it only works because it's it's subtitled in, in Japanese. But it was still so it's such a perfect moment in in, in the anime. It, it it really was like the, the payday was it was great. Yep. All right. Then there's a scream. Yep. Lestrade yep. walks up. Then there's a scream. Hey, there's been a murder in a locked cabin, and, and Sherlock's like. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a detective showdown. Moriarty's like, yeah. And Lewis the is like, it's like, this is not a game. <laughs> yeah. And even Lewis is like, we're doing what? That's a terrible idea. It's <laughs> and not Moriarty's, part of the plan. <laughs> Moriarty's like, no, we should totally do this. This will be great. Uh, and then Watson walks up with blood on his his body. The killer bumped into shot at first. Of shot. His I did too. I wrote yeah. shot, but yeah, he, uh, he, he's just got the, he's got the victim's blood on him. And so the, the train cops run up and they think it's him. And, and Lashad's like, it, it's not going to be him. This is John Watson. He helps solve cases. And they're like, yeah, but still we have to arrest him. Mm-hmm. And, and Moriarty and Sherlock are like, that's fine. We'll solve the case. We have 48 minutes to do it because you can't jump off the train. It's going too fast. And that's the next stop. We have 48 minutes. So they go into the room. Sherlock does his deduction thing. He's like, it's a it's a bungled robbery. So this guy was a jewelry salesman. Um, he was drugged. He had to wait. He must have woken up and then gotten murdered. And, and Lestrade's like asking all these questions and Moriarty's answering it for him, basically keeping up with the deductions at the same speed Sherlock is. And then they go their separate ways, but they both read the manifest because they both come up with the idea that it has to be a staff member. It had to be someone that could have come in and offered a drink and it wouldn't have been weird. And there was more clues. I can't remember them all. I did like that they came from two different angles. Uh, Sherlock's angle was what is the physical evidence and Moriarty's is what is the psychological profile. Yep. And that was pretty cool. I did like how Moriarty goes, Sherlock's going to come from that angle, so I'm going to come from something else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, and especially at, so we follow Moriarty as he does his investigation. Every time he's like, Sherlock's going to find out this and he's going to know this. So this, this, this. <laughs> and then Sherlock will know this and then Sherlock will do this. Um, but basically he he comes to the point where, yeah, Sherlock's going to know who it is. So we need to go talk to all the staff before Sherlock calls everyone together to, to solve the crime. Uh, and then we jump to them solving the crime and Sherlock's like, hey, staff. Uh, it has to be someone with this shoe size, so you guys are all out. It's just you two. Uh, please show us your gloves because they would have had blood on their gloves. And the first guy's like, yeah, it's not me. And the second guy's like, oh, no, it's me. And then he's like, no, it's not. I cut myself through my gloves, and that's why there's blood in my gloves. And he does have two cuts in his hands. And Moriarty's like, ah, that's true. But how did you get blood on your glasses? 
even simpler in the animation of the gloves why are no there cut. no cuts on the gloves i honestly yeah, thought that's, that's what moriarty was about to say but no. yeah. come on anime of... get your f- cloth physics right <laughs> thank you <laughs> Uh, so the guy confesses, hey, I was just trying to rob him. I didn't mean to kill him. It was an accident. But my daughter did point out there's a handprint on his side, at which they, they point out he was trying to catch the blood. He didn't mean to kill him. Um, but yeah, and then Moriarty and one more for old time's sake, Simon are walking Simon. away. <laughs> uh, and he's like, hey, uh, yeah, w- when we met with the staff, I put blood on all the staff members so that whoever Sherlock found out, I could... They wouldn't have a loophole and then it wouldn't take extra time because we only had the 48 minutes. And he points out that's why Sherlock's a perfect tool because he has to stay within the rules and I can do whatever I want <laughs> to win. And so that was interesting to me because basically that gave the impression that Moriarty was not able to figure out which individual it was because he basically scattershot the group. He knew how yeah. to narrow it down, but he couldn't pick the one. Right. And which is funny because all it would have been was like, oh, look at the gloves because the guy's wearing them. But I, I don't understand. think that's true. I think him and Sherlock had come to the same conclusion. If we can figure out who has yeah. the bloody gloves, they, we win. But he knew that wouldn't be enough. Mm. He knew that there would be, you know, that an excuse would, could be brought up and they would need a nail in the coffin. So he just faked the nail in the coffin because he doesn't care about the rules. Yeah, I think in. Once they stopped, they still would have arrested the dude. But I think Moriarty pointed out it would have taken days to, like, figure it all out and finally nail it down. He would have been judged in court rather than right there. And Moriarty wanted justice right right now. Right. Mm. That makes sense. Uh, Then we get a scene of Sherlock and Watson making up in the bar. I absolutely love when Sherlock, anytime Sherlock Holmes has to apologize to Watson because he has no idea how to <laughs> interact with humans usually. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> this is a great scene. Uh, and they, they partner back up. And then we get a scene of the queen getting, re- getting told that a bunch of reports have gone missing. And she's like, Hey, you go get those reports. I don't care what it takes. Mycroft Holmes. <laughs> Brother of Sherlock Holmes, who is not fat. No, he's beautiful. Someone give me a fat version of Mycroft. That's how he's. Yeah, he's corpulent my... in the books. They describe yes. him as corpulent. But for this, he's fat for the same reason Sherlock uses opium. That's the, how they deal with their brains. It literally they can't handle their brains, so they they do stuff. He eats mm-hmm. nonstop, mm-hmm. and then. And they make in the BBC one, they make jokes about how Mycroft used to be fat, but I haven't seen a real fat Mycroft, not counting the Christmas special. All right. <laughs> That's where it ends. And it ended so suddenly that we thought there was a 12th episode. Yeah. yeah I, I, I was, started I, looking around and everybody was like, hey, it's coming out in April. And it's like, wait a minute. Did this anime just finish airing? <laughs> yeah. Well. Yep, a little bit, a little bit of panic on our side, but we're good. Um, uh, thoughts? Any thoughts on the ending before we go to final review? Um, one thing was I didn't really remember the details on Minecraft. Minecraft, but God, I keep wanting to call him call him Minecraft. Minecraft. Like, Laura Croft. Who would, who would name a character by the wrong name? How unprofessional! I know, right? <laughs> Um, it's just the thing we do here on Baka Baka Baka. <laughs> we pick random names out of the hat before we start the show. <laughs> um, Get your names right, Bill. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I-, I looked it up, and he's really fascinating. Apparently, he's way smarter than Sherlock, yeah. which I didn't know that was a thing. But he's got like an eidetic memory and everything. So I- that's probably the one thing that would draw me back to see how they use this character and. How does he throw wrenches into everybody's plans? Um, so, anyways, he's also full on government lap. At least what I, the version of him I know, he's he's usually a government agent. You know, he, he's not the the seeker of truth and justice like Sherlock is. He's not there mm. to help people. He's there to serve the queen. Yeah. All right, let's go on to our final reviews. Jason, you picked it. What do you think? I thoroughly enjoyed myself the entire way through. I know you guys weren't big fans of the first five episodes. I thought they were great setup and great character development. Of course, everyone knows here on Baka Baka Baka, Jason loves a slow burn storytelling. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) So um, 
I was very surprised. I love the subversive nature of the storytelling, telling it from the point of view of the villain that was clearly evil, but, you know, obscured by this morally gray uh, code of ethics that, of his own making. Um, I give it a four. I, I thoroughly enjoyed myself, and I'm actually looking forward to the next season. So, All right, Jeremy, what did you think? Uh, for me, this was really just kind of a middle of the road anime. Um, I enjoyed it a lot once Sherlock came on the scene uh, for all the reasons that I've given so far. I would have loved to have seen more difficulty, more hurdles, more twists for Moriarty, uh, less telling us what all the pieces are and where they're going to to fall and more showing us and letting us kind of follow the path through the eyes of, of somebody who doesn't know all the secrets so that we can be wowed when things happen. Um, but we didn't, didn't really get that from this. Um, yeah. I, I also, I'm, I'm really sad that the uh, supporting cast didn't really have anything that's very memorable about them either. Uh, in the end, I think I'm stuck given this. It'll eek in at a three for me. All right. It's a solid three for me. The the problems in the beginning, just just so many episodes to do what I felt could have been done in half the time. Um, really, that's my only biggest complaint about it. it if, if this wasn't Sherlock Holmes, I'd probably just be like, ah, this was an all right anime. But it was Sherlock Holmes. And the second half was really good. And I'm super into season two. You, you give me Albert and Lewis starting to fray up the the plan with their own personal agendas and their own ideals of what the plan should be um give me moran and fred's backstory and give me just a ton more sherlock versus moriarty back and forth and uh this would be a five for me easily easily um as but because also again because it's sherlock holmes <laughs> otherwise it'd probably be a four but yeah i i'm going biased. to watch I, personally <laughs> I, at least i'm I'm honest about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm I going to watch season two. I'm, I'm going to enjoy it um, uh, on my own. So it, I, I give it a three, but just so much potential in it that I think it could easily just skyrocket. All right. That is the, the end of talking about Moriarty the Patriot. And you already know what our next anime is. It's the second half of the second season of ReZero, episodes 14 through 25. We're, we're back, baby. Uh, I got a text from my oldest daughter, who's away at college, and she's like, ReZero is the greatest isekai that's ever been made. And I'm like, yeah, duh. Thanks for joining the team. <laughs> Someone hadn't watched it till just now. Uh, oh. and, and now she's ahead of me and, and holding spoilers over my head. So, yeah, we got to watch this. We got to watch this yeah. now, and that's what we'll be doing. Like right now. Yes. <laughs> so if you have thoughts on Moriarty the Patriot and the other anime we've discussed or ReZero without spoiling us, uh, feel free to share them on our Twitter at Baka Podcast or email the anime Baka Club at gmail.com or leave a comment wherever you found this podcast and it'll get back to us. Uh, I think it's time for us to say goodbye. Thanks for listening. Catch me if you can. Sign our home. You wrote it. You wrote it. <laughs> Mr. Holmes. Can't believe you. <laughs> Mr. Holmes. I don't, why, did, why, why did you reference a Tom Hanks Leonardo DiCaprio movie at the end of the podcast? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs>